Welcome to Wednesday at the Modus Super Series, and you know what that means by now. It means that we will crown the Group A winner and get the first player at our weekly finals night confirmed. Well, after Monday's play, Tommy Morris was leading the way, but that lead changed hands yesterday. Here is your one minute roundup. It was a day to forget for Lisa Ashton. The four-time world champion suffered five defeats from as many matches, despite the odd flashy finish like this. Group C beckons for her, but maybe not for Michelle van der Horst. The Dutchman had a much improved day, adding three wins to the one that he picked up on Monday with the aid of fantastic checkouts like that one. Thibaut Trico was favorite to win the group before a dart was thrown. That looks beyond the Frenchman now, though, having only recorded two wins in each of the sessions so far. Birmingham's Daniel Lee picked up another couple of victories and is sitting in third place ahead of the final day's play. But it is poised for a straight fight between two for top spot, and it should be a high-speed, high-quality race between Tommy Morris and Patrick Mart, who won all five of his fixtures yesterday to put himself in pole position going into the last lap. Yeah, Patrick in pole, Scott Mitchell alongside me. A brilliant day for him, five out of five yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. We know that the Tuesday is the moving day and, and he really moved yesterday and he had a few disappointments and setbacks and he didn't let that get to him. Busted a 172, and he still carried on winning games. He, ju he just forgot it as fast as it happened. Yeah, it might be all about the mentality of the top two as we look at the table going into the final day's play. Mark, two points clear of Morris. Now, interestingly, he plays before Tommy Morris in each of the first two rounds of fixtures, then meets him in game seven. So he could keep putting himself four points clear. That could put a lot of pressure on Tommy. It could well do, but I think that, you know, Tommy will then know at least what he has to do. So... Uh, the pressure's on Patrick to try and keep getting that two points ahead and, and uh, we'll, we'll see how this pans out and then by the time we, we get to them playing at game seven, we'll both know how they're playing today and feeling under the pressure of a, of a big situation that neither of them have ever been in before. Right, we'll look more ahead at today in a moment, but a quick reflection on yesterday in terms of the stats. Now, that overall average at the bottom, down about two points from Monday, but the big reason why, probably the checkout rate there, 27.53%. That's around seven points lower than it was the day before. What does that tell us? Well, obviously, the checkouts do make a massive difference on the uh, averages, and, and that probably checkout stat is the the principle why the averages are a little bit lower. Is it maybe a few players realising that their race was run as well, maybe losing a bit of sort of mental engagement? Yeah, very much so. And there was a, there was a lot of players missing a lot of doubles yesterday. So um, I think that'll be sharpened up again today. It's last day. They've, they've got to dictate which group they're going to go in. And so uh, they know that they need a good day. Right. Thibaut Trico was actually the favourite before a dart was thrown. He was still second favourite yesterday. That's all changed now as we look at the betting for the group. It really is a two-horse race, isn't it? Yeah, the bookies rarely get it wrong, and you can see the odds there that uh, no, they're not seeing anybody outside that top two winning this group. Yeah, and Lisa Ashton, of course, can't now win the group, having lost all five fixtures yesterday. Uh, it's time now to look at Scotty Dogg's selections. He has put together uh, a little bit of a, an accumulator for you. Now, Scott, he did fall at the first fence yesterday, so I, I see you've been a little bit more conservative today. I, I fell in the first four legs yesterday, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've gone Matt Tricol. We've obviously gone Matt to win that one. Uh, Ashton and Matt, most 180s for Matt. He's been a big 180 hitter yesterday. Uh, and Ashton Morris, Morris to win 4-1 or better, and that will give you a treble of 6.7, 6.67, sorry, to 1. Yeah, indeed. Do gamble responsibly. Be gambleaware.org for information on responsible gambling. Now, Scott's made it all about Mart and Morris. That's what the race is for that top spot. But there's also the subplot of getting in to Group B. And uh, Michelle van der Horst, well, with that performance yesterday, three wins, could have been four when he went into his last match against Mart. He's certainly in contention to get into the top three, isn't he? His 180 stats are so good and his scoring stats are so good. It's his double stats are appalling. So he has to sharpen up on those doubles. The game is there. It's just those doubles at, cr at crucial moments as well. I think he can get up into Group B. First match for him against Patrick. Well, is he a potential banana skin for Patrick? Oh, definitely. He should have had him yesterday. He, uh, he missed seven darts at 2-2 yesterday and the game got away from him. So, um, look, we haven't seen 
the real Michel van der Horst yet. I've known him a long time and he's disappointed. I've spoken to him that he hasn't put his proper game out. Maybe today he can do that five times. Right, the race is on. Who will thrive? Who will falter? We're going to find out over 15 matches today. Scott Mitchell is going to head into commentary where he will join Henry Deacon. Morning, Henry. Morning, Chris. Morning, everyone. Welcome to day three here at the Super Series. And we begin with a little bit of double dutch as Michelle van der Horst takes on Patrick Martin. Right from the get-go here on our action on the final day of Group A, we have got a game which could well help decide the destiny of it. Well, Patrick Mart yesterday, well, Three he was perfect in terms of the results bracket. Five wins from five, and that's why he finds himself on 16 points. That's why he finds himself in what is not an unassailable position, but a promising one going into his final five matches of the group, the 29-year-old from Zwolle. The ADC European qualifier this week, alongside the other okay, player to make it through Michelle the ADC system. First. Owen Binks Game is on. going to be officiating all of the action over the course of the next 15 games to decide the destiny of Group A. Michel van der Horst then throwing the first darts of the day. An improved day for him 100. yesterday. Three wins from five for him. And look at as if he's really settled into proceedings Fifth here of the live eight. lounge in Portsmouth. Took him a couple of games on Monday to settle into life, but now being at home on the stage. 140. He actually helped Patrick Mart out yesterday because he got the better of Tommy Morris by four legs to one. It was one of his most impressive performances up 66. to date. A 92.39 average and four out of seven on the doubles to the pose of Morris, who is beginning today on the back foot. He's the one trailing. He's the one behind and chasing Mark 57. for that spot. And so because of the way the fixtures are positioned, Patrick can move four points clear and really put the pressure on 60. Tommy Morris. The pair will then meet in game seven, which is the beginning of round three of our fixtures. So we've got an interesting day ahead. We're going to be watching it all in the company of the 2015 40. BDO champion of the world. Very good morning, Scott Mitchell. Good morning. Yeah, an interesting day to come. It's, 60. Uh, Michelle, we record 164. On the balcony, this is really, I, this is a potential banana skin if Michelle van der Horst gets his game out here. Because also if Patrick 38 doesn't grab those two points, it gets, gets Morris the boost following him for the first couple of matches. So 26, Michelle, you're going Ooh, those were tight. There's a bit of shoulder in those from Mart. And of course, doesn't have to attack the bullseye if he doesn't want to. He's got the luxury 54. of time. He can play the role of sport. He's already done it in this group. Let's see of that win I mentioned hey, a couple of moments ago Michelle, against Tommy Morris. Well, he can repay the favor to the pull man. If he can get victory over Martin in the opening match of the session. Double 12 is what he wants for the opening rubber. 60. But it moves inside. And that's been his Achilles heel so far in the first two days for Van der Horst. It's the doubling has been the problem. 59. Michelle, you require 12. Game shot on the first. A conservative leg. opening Michelle leg, but it's been won by Van der Horst. He gets the opening rubber of the day. The pair met in there. Final game of yesterday's session. It was game Second 14. Patrick, to throw first. Patrick, a 4-2 winner. Average of 80, 4 out of 16 on the doubles. It was a game at the end of the day where both players had put in some good performances prior. 44. Just a little bit of a ring rust towards the finishing line. And I suppose if you're the top two players in this, you can actually be no, over-concentrating on each other and forgetting the other four members of the group. And, you know, there's a potential of, of making, you know, a 46. mistake against one of those players. I mean, let, let's take Lisa, for example. She she failed to win yesterday. She's she's a four-time world champion. She's not going to accept that from herself again today. So she's going to put the burners on against somebody. Will it be one of those at the top? Because naturally, we're all looking at that game 60. seven between the pair because that's when they meet. But... It could all be over by then, for example. Patrick Mark could win his first two. Tommy Moyes could lose his first two. Or vice versa. Tommy hey, could win his first four. two. Patrick could lose his first two. And he's got off to a real slow start here. This is, well, way below any kind of levels we've seen from him over the 29. course of the first two days. He's definitely thinking. There's no two ways about this. Patrick Mart is definitely thinking here. And he knows, 58. you know, to be on the first game this morning, um, a difficult one when you're top of the group. You would, you would rather be sat there and having 
have him sort of being second or third game. So um, he's taking his time to find his feet. He's just found that, but is it too late? One two eight is one of those dodgy numbers where you've got to go. You've got to hit two trebles to leave something decent. Eighty eight. And uh, he's tied it up nicely there. So Mark's back on one eight two. Six games. Shall we require four? He's now starting to think those were good six from him. But it's now Van der Horst. Game on the second leg. Sneaks Michel it in the Vanderhorst. other corner this time. He hit one just in the top corner of the double six last leg. And now he's just hit the other corner of the double top. If Michel you're Patrick to Martin and you're watching this, you're game going, on. oh, not today, please. But when you've won game after game after game, sometimes, and I know this sounds 58. really strange, it's nice to lose one to get the monkey off your back. And then, and then you go back to... Well, I'm back where I am now. 96. Well, Van der Horst hasn't had to be spectacular, but he's done enough to accrue the opening two legs. And you could just see in the background at the end of leg two, Patrick March just 99. throwing his hands together, maybe just needing to get a little bit on the hand. Maybe well, it shouldn't be cold because it's very warm in the auditorium, but maybe just not feeling the grip early on. Yeah, absolutely. It's... Uh... Sometimes it's psychosomatic that you can't feel the grip. Sometimes it's to do with the situation. I, I find it quite funny when a player comes to you and says, oh, yeah, look at my hands, they're cold. For this. That's generally the situation. You're nervous. If your hands are cold, you're nervous. So, uh, 140, but Michael Vanderhorst just not letting go. Hasn't had a dart at double yet. 94. Michelle, we record May will get one if this 1 2 1 doesn't go for a 3 0 lead. It could very much go. It's the bullseye. Nine. It was also almost 2 0. Uh, 3 0. 76. Where he was, and uh, Van der Horst didn't really go for the travel. 60. And he's going to return for the 25. 25. Is today the day that he's. You're having a laugh, aren't you? Game show on the third oh, Now, if Horst. you're Patrick Mark, you're thinking the world is against you. Fourth leg, it's Patrick to throw first. Well, Michelle actually did well there not to bust it because it was so close to that treble bed. Just want to have a look again at the throw of Patrick Mark. Now, we were talking yesterday. We had a, a tweet and observation by someone that looked very Tony O'Shea like in the smoothness 57. of the action. Just want to watch Patrick again as he comes back to the board just have a look at that release there especially with the first dart there seemed to be just a little bit of tension as he released that first dart a little bit of snap there was a, a little bit of tension and if you notice he didn't actually follow right through and follow the arm down he, he Ooh, sort of he went fought. through straight and his arm stayed high and straight and then with his next two he goes straight down through and picks up his his, his next dart so he's having the odd jitter I think is the answer. The covered well in this leg. This has been probably his best leg of the back so far. Leaves himself one four five after nine. One hundred and five. That is a very tidy setup for forty after twelve for Patrick Mark. Forty. Patrick, you require forty. Michelle really hasn't done anything on this leg at all. Game shot on the fourth leg. Patrick Mart. And Michelle van der Horst will know that that was just a holder throw for Patrick Mart. It was a 14 dart. Fifth leg, it's Michelle. Holder throw, throw when you're 3 0 down. Quite impressive. And now Michelle will be looking for more of those trouble 20s. That saw him win legs one, 100. two, and three. Well, Michel hasn't deviated in his performance because it was exactly the way he played in legs one, two, and three, but he didn't really have that opposition 60. from Patrick Mark, whereas that last leg was a 14 dart to the best in this game by some considerable distance. And so what was good enough in the first three legs may well be 44. rendered irrelevant as we head towards the finishing line in this one. I mean, you can now see that Michel van der Horst is starting to overthink. 60. A bit of head shaking and there's a... There's another one with a bit of shoulder from Patrick Mark. This is uh, this is going to be tense, nervous headache as we head to the finishing 40. line here. 
This is what we want to see. People feeling pressure of situation, seeing how they react to it. It's the ultimate endurance test. I bet you're glad you're sat here and not out there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I think lots of players, whether it's been in a pub no, league or not. whether it's been at the Super League or your county, we've all been in this situation where you just can't dictate what no, your arm is five. going to do. Your head's trying to tell it, but your arm is not complying. In these 100. moments, it becomes pretty much detached from the rest of the body. That's been a trait of his game this morning. That first one 100. under the treble 20 causes a few problems. It's 118. He's missed the big number, rushed it a little. 54 left. Michelle, 78. nice big 14. So 41. 141 for Matt. This would have be a massive save, but he's going to set it up. Nine, he's six. Shall we and so Van der Horst to Go give us the, the first sting Michelle in the tail of Wednesday at the Super Series. He gets the better of Patrick Mark by four legs to one. And the first storyline has been written as the league leader overnight is defeated. Patrick Mark loses 4-1 to Michel Van der Horst. It wasn't a classic. It was a little bit tense in truth. And so it opens up the door for Tommy Morris. We're not going to see him till game three. After the break, it is the battle of England and France. It's Lisa Ashton against Thibaut Tricol after this short break.
Good morning, welcome back. Match two here features the Lancashire Rose and the French Touch as Lisa Ashton takes on Thibaut Tricol, who is very much in touch with the top three and despite being favourite to win the group before a dart was thrown, will surely now be targeting a Group B spot. That's a subplot that will play out in the shadow of the Mark Morris race at the top of the table, and that has already taken a turn with league leader Patrick Mark losing his opener and talking you through every single twist in today's tale are your commentary team of Scott Mitchell and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, you've already seen one upset today in... Well, those who maybe had seven to four on Tommy Morris to win group pay is a bit of an outside pump, maybe looking at things a bit more optimistically. Next up for us, though, Thibaut Chacol up against Lisa Ashton. Two players who had high hopes and expectations going into this week at the live lounge in Portsmouth, but they all know that the second half of the week is okay, going to be where they're going to have to shine. But Thibaut Chacol has been a case of starting days slowly. In fact, in his first two days' worth of action, he hasn't averaged... And he hasn't posted an average in the 80s in any of his first two fixtures. 76. That's four games where he's averaged in the 70s to kick off a session. We oui, oui, Monsieur, that is correct. He has been a slow starter, hasn't One, he? 180. Lisa Ashton isn't. Fifty-four. These two did meet yesterday in game four, which was one of those subpar performances from Jacole. It was a Game played by Miss Doubles, but Jacol managed to get over the line in that one. 4 0 winner. He missed Nine, 10 darts at double. Ashton missed 11. As for Lisa, she's so experienced at this format, and Nine, she'll know no matter three. what happens on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, it's a different quantity. It's a different league. It's. A, it's Everyone back on zero points and one hundred. Well, he's seen her take out a one seventy this week, and today is about finding some form that can harbour as much confidence as possible. Seventy five. Mm, seeing Tebow here having another 26. slow start. He's required ninety five. That was a bag of nails. That last twenty six there. 70. Oh, 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 the champagne finish from Lisa Ashton on the bullseye there. The corks were nearly popped just before 10 o'clock. I was wondering whether it was Christmas Day or not for Lisa a minute, Scott. 25. I'd be looking for presents in the commentary box if it was Christmas Day. 17. See you require 51. Again, a problem for Lisa. She, she had a few problems with doubles yesterday. Game shot on the first leg. She's let that Team one get Trinkle. away again. It's not that she's not getting there and having the chances to win legs. It's just when she gets there. Second leg is Lisa to throw first. For sizing Game a little on. that when she gets to the double and trying to put it in rather than just think, right, next leg, here no, we go. Just five. pop this here and I'll, we're off to the next one. When you haven't been winning, you do this. You a player does this. They try to put the dart in to make sure, if you like, and that's the worst thing you can do. Chacol, nine to Max to kick off leg two after Ashton kicked off leg one in a similar vein. Not going to kick on from that. Well, at least in terms of completing a perfect 45. leg, anyway. It's a six one eighty of the group. Which is not the 47. normal Tebow that we see. He's usually a big, big scorer, 140s, 180s. To have just six by day three. 100. I think it's a sign of where it's been going wrong for Trico. Now, how much do you like Trent Scott? Because if you look at Tricol's last five games... It's loss, win, loss, win, loss. So on that evidence, he should win this game. 60. His overall 132. record of the last 100 matches is 152, loss 48. He's a very even kilter. 45. He's a 50, 50 man, isn't he? 16. I mean, as a player, we probably don't remember things like that. 
to be fair. And he won't be thinking that. 96. Means you require 92. So he's just gone the ball route to try and get a dart or something, which for those 68. out there, that is the way to go. Youngsters watching. Recovered it with the treble 20, but once again, a little wayward on the double. Oh, this could be dodgy. He can't believe it himself that he's missed that by so far. 15. Lisa He'd rather have missed 24. that over the top than underneath, I think. But Lisa's coming back for 24. Eighteen. Now it's Ashton who's going to have that look of bewilderment as Jacol returns. No score. Oh wow! And what's it they say six. that the hardest number to find is the single? And on that case, on that occasion, it proved to be true. Four. There's a bit Did of tension, isn't five. there? There's a little bit of day three anxiety and nerves creeping into play. There certainly is, Henry. There certainly is. One. At least you're required to. Like to be a fly on the wall. There's a fly on the board. Game shot on the second leg. Well, it's Lisa not a flying Ashton. start, but Ashton's back level at one apiece. You get to a point in these legs where you've had the so many darts at double. You don't care who wins. You just want the leg gone as a player out the way. And move on to the next. One. And that's how you have to mentally sort of guide yourself because, you know, it gets to the point where you start to be a little bit embarrassed. And uh, you, you, you don't want to be the one to win the leg sometimes when it goes that long. Can it also almost be a case of because both players and the bottom of the group, Ashton obviously struggled yesterday at times Chakol's had his struggles to start a, a day it's sometimes the first game of a session you can try too hard and because of it and because both are doing the same it can creep into one another's game a little bit more yeah it can do but one hundred and eighty from Chakol two in the match for him 138 to be required 98 58. At least you require 84. So for the break of throw and a 2-1 lead, 14 ball. Misses the big number. Both players have had issues with that so far in this game. And so Jacol is going to return for tops. So what will be the best 40. leg in this game? A 13 data to lead 2-1. Game show on the third. You ask yourself, where has that come Jacob. from, from the first two legs, which... Have been scratchy and a bit scrapey and a bit nasty. Well, look, it's Lisa to throw for And then up pops a 14 Game. dart leg on the throw for Trickle. 137. Has this lit the blue touch paper on this match? That 14 dart leg. Good start from Ashton there. 100. Cole looks a little more relaxed on his throw. He doesn't look so tight. And Lisa doesn't either. Whoa, and she hits her second 180 of the match. And this is what good players do, what great players do, is know when to find the good stuff at the right times. Very much so. Lakeside finalists. 92. You know, shows they're no slouch. And obviously, Lisa with her four wins. Jacob has experienced that final. Hey, it's it's Neil Duff, so we Lisa know they're no slouches. 92. So, two and a hand at double 16. Four, she though. only needs the Lisa one. And this Ashton. game's boiling up because that was an 11 from Ashton. The average creeps to just under 89. If and after a little first, bit of a game on. scruffy leg on the doubles, ever since we've seen a 14 and an 11, and maybe, just maybe, that blue touch paper has been lit. Yeah, right wry smile from Trico thereafter. I think he thought, you know, 14, that was nice for me, and then a 
Lovely 11 from Ashton. 60. Showing that she's not going anywhere. Neither is Tracol. One. Well, we've gone from no maximums in the first game to four in the space of four and a bit legs in this one. 140. Yeah, but also in this one, we have a 20 darts at a double and only four finding their home. So 140. that's why the averages are not higher. Well, Tracol could actually break his own duck in terms of averages above 80 on the opening couple of games of a day. He finishes the day strongly, but we've mentioned the slow start. Well, it's been anything but in this one after that tentative Second 54. leg. Yeah, agreed. Here comes Ashton again. Hey, you know what? Jimmy require 107. That's double 14. 79. At least you require 112. Dark goes a begging at a double. Difficult one to go past for Lisa, but she's got it. 32 again. 18. Right on the wire. Timo required 28. the chances on that one after hitting the 92, the leg before. Will she get back? Game shot on the fifth. No, she won't. The Frenchman takes out the 28 to take a 3 2 lead. And so Lisa to the French first. touch is within Aimer. touching distance of an opening win of his day. 81. Dracol, whose battle will be for Group B darts on Thursday and Friday, respectively. A couple of points off the pace to Daniel Lee and Michelle Van der Horst. We're going to see Lee up next against Tommy Morris, who can return to the top of the table with a victory following Van der Horst's um, success against Patrick Mart. Forty-three. Yeah, scoreboard pressure here from Lisa Ashton on Tricol again with that one forty. Really needs to follow it up. That last start was lovely. Sixty. So six from here for Ashton to take us to a decider, perhaps fitting and perhaps fair. 39. When you consider all things in this game. That poor visit could cause her a few problems. But Nine, Tricol 95. Lisa, you 141. Travel 20 with the last one. 43. Again, a mistake with the last, but. Double travel visit here from Tricol would cause a few problems still, even with the three, but it's not going to happen. 43. Lisa require 98. That's where will Lisa go. It's travel 20 for double 19. She'll stay there. 58. It's tidally set. And now it's time to stand behind. Fingers crossed that the 160 doesn't go. It doesn't. And so Ashton will return. One hundred and four. But she is going to return Lisa under copious amounts of pressure as Tracol leads himself on double ten. And he's going to get a go because that was a wire grazer from Ashton. And so Tracol to pick up the points wants double ten. Fives. Fifteen. Dip below. Ashton returns. Required twenty. She really wouldn't have expected to either. Game shown the six. And we go three three, which I think is deserving of this match. To be fair, it's been a game that has swung one way Seven, then the other. The ascendancy game has off. shifted on more than one occasion. Ninety five. Jacol has the darts. How important is that going to be in the end game? 84. Tidy find there from Ashton with her last start. 
41. Not to be said for Chacol's last start there in the one. 42. So we've had the madness and all the big scores. We're now getting the tense, nervous headache. In the last leg, jittery decider. 85. Darts from all ends of the spectrum. 100. You get the sense from here is whoever's going to blink first may be the one that loses. They're effectively cancelling each other out visit by visit. 45. Is that the slip? 60. Sixty-five. So a 170 leave from Tricol. Ashton will be trying to leave something a little smaller. 49. So you require 170. Going for the bullseye. She's been unfortunate and hit the line and left no shot. So it's six from here for Tricol. And it's looking it's like he's going to need all six as well. That's a poor, poor visit. It's just left the door ajar for Ashton if she can find a good setup play here. 58. To be 142. 142 to pick up the two points. So Ashton comes back for the ball maker, but 108. 60. Only one treble needed in this combination. Excellent. The Shanghai and 18. 72. Do we require 82? So it's Tricol now on 82. He's gone. Ball hit 19. 63. It's got to be 13. And that dark could be a problem 57. for him. He's 25. It's Ashton for the match then on double 18. Her favourite double. Go sees her pick up the, the points and beat Lisa Thibaut Tricol. By four legs to three, and that could well pay for his Group B chances on Thursday and Friday. And once again, Thibaut Tricol kicks off a day with an average below 80. Lisa Ashton, a 4-3 victor then, with an 81.6 average. It was a game played by Miss Doubles in the end. There's a really scratchy second leg in that particular department, but it is the Lancashire Rose who goes on to pick up the points. We're going to take a short break. Tommy Morris can return to the top of the table. If he claims victory in our third game of the day, he takes on the impressive ADC qualifier from the Midlands, Daniel Lee.
Welcome back. Wednesday's Arrows action continues here at the Moda Super Series and it's eyes back on the race at the top of the table, which is where Tommy Morris will return to if he defeats Daniel Lee here in the pair's opening encounter of the day. I'm going to pose a question for the boys in commentary and for you at home to ponder here, because if Lee wins this one himself, he will move on to 12 points, two behind Morris and four off Mark with Patrick still to play. So can he join that race? Over to Scott and Henry. Well, the way that he's played this week, thanks, Murph. The way that he played this week, I think that he could actually, but it, but this is a must-win game against one of those top players. So uh, it's probably why he's where he is in third place because he hasn't kind of performed against these two that are above him. Had he had done that, he would okay, have found himself Daniel in that position. But first. Game on! You feel that if he is going to challenge for top spot or even you know, the top spot of Group B, uh, he, he's going to have to win this game. 60. And it could be backed up by yesterday's performances for Dan Lee in those games because he lost 4-1 to Patrick Mark and he lost 4-1 to Tommy 100. Morris. Now, of course, it's very makeable. A lot of things will have to transpire, but you've got to do the job against the boys at the top. I think he could be really dangerous in Group B if he qualifies there. I think he, I think he would be one of the three that got through. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I think he, he took a bit of pace out of the game 60. yesterday when he played Tommy Morris. And I don't think that worked for him. He compromised his game a little and dropped off the average a little. But Tommy didn't, 40, you know. 40. So, um, yeah, whether whether he intentionally did that yesterday, I'm unsure. 140. But Tommy's just a guy that just gets on with it and doesn't kind of worry too much about what's going on around him. He just gets his head down and throws that 100 mile an hour, which is, hey, which is always exciting want... to watch. One hundred and forty mile an hour. Went out the blocks quickly. Back to back ton 40s. Leads him on 61 after 12 against the darts. And so he's going to get an opportunity to break the throw of Daniel Lee in the opener. 42. Tommy Morris requires generally 61. goes 25 here for the 61. Get two scores. Tidy up from here. One dart, a double top. 21. On the Daniel wire. 134. So Daniel Lee back in on the 134. That's not going to go now. Sometimes 60. Morris's Achilles heel is when he's got three 40. darts in his hand, going for a double. That's such a plumb Game line. There was no the way leg. he could Tommy miss the Morris. second dart. He plonks it in off the first to accrue the break, and he leads Daniel Lee by leg to nil. Second leg is Tommy to throw first. Indeed, Game for on. such a lad that's in small in stature, to use a 26-gram dart is quite unusual. 100. As a quicker player, does it help to throw a heavier dart? Because you're going to get that trajectory for the air. Where if, if you're a quicker player and you're throwing, say, a Stephen Bunting-type dart that's very light because it's going through the air quite quickly. I think it's to do with the weight that's in your hand. I mean, 54. I think it's much more difficult to throw quickly with a lighter dart, which is why I think that the Stephen Bunting sort of 60. scenario is extremely unusual. Um to find that standard as well uh, uh, with, with that light dart. Whereas I think with a heavier dart, to throw quick, you can feel the weight. You get a feel of where the dart needs to be. And, hey, it's E3. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, it, Tommy's dart isn't a branded dart. It's a dart he's had for years. I think it's just a cheap dart from, from one, one of your sort of retailers, really. It's not, not one of your player darts. Well, I'll tell you what, people be going down the shops in their droves to try and find that set the way Tommy Morris has been playing at the minute. Well, he's come out with some charge on day three as he smacks one into the one. Thank you, Tommy. 25. So, that's really an unforced error in this situation for Morris. 44. But he's got away with it. He's got away with it. Stays just over a ton in front. 60. Oh, 
180 for Lee would have been the dream shot here. 100. He's going to have to settle with 76. a ton in hopes that Morris lets him back in. Yeah, 32 left. It's 32 left. Good pick up on the double. Six, 13. A treble 13 after the mistake with the first, but Lee now here could cause him a few nightmares. Time to climb the ladder. Maybe don't climb the ladder. Morris back then for 16 for 2 0. 80. Tommy requires 16. Good setup to leave tops. Game but he's not going to get a go. Leg. Tommy Morris 2 0 up and he's halfway towards victory here, which would put him top to the. Top to the table, and if he can win it for zip, he'd move on to plus Better 19 in terms of legs difference. Game on. Patrick Marks on plus six, so he'd actually open up a 13 leg gap in terms of legs difference. Now, the maximum you can swing one way or another 100. in a game is eight, so effectively, he would put himself a game and a half in front in terms of legs difference. 95. Yep. Which is uh, which shows the dominance that he's had in this Group A when he's won. You know, it, uh, a couple of games that he lost yesterday where the, the, both opponents hit sort of 90, 93 plus. So 60. Well, Daniel's done that thing again where he's gone for the ball maybe for a visit. What well, you will see from him is some new, unique ways of going for things. He's very maverick and eccentric like that. We like players like that. However, what he has done is left himself on 168. When you leave yourself a bogey, oh, he hasn't hit the two trouble 20s, which is what you usually do. 43. I think he's still gutted that he actually left himself on a bogey. That can also be a thought. So Morris here with just one single travel on this visit. Get Lee in all sorts of mire. 59. It hasn't happened. Require 125. Now, don't be surprised if he hits 25 first, dart. He then goes for bullseye, bullseye. 49. Spotter's nightmare. Daniel Lee <laughs> into the fray. Daniel Lee requires 76. 61 left. He's gone treble seven 36. for tops on 61, electing against the ball's eye on this occasion. And so Tommy Moore is back for 90 after Daniel Lee decided against the play to leave the ball. And he may well get punished if Morris can find the double 15. The double break and a 3 0 lead is within his grasp, but he moves it inside. And so Daniel is going to get a go at double top. No score. Daniel, you require 40. Mistake from Morris there, busting that 90. Double 10. 30. He's going to come back, so a massive mistake from Tommy Morris in my book. Because he, he, made... he hasn't made many all week. And he knows it was a mistake, but he's recovered it. He's recovered it well. 73. Daniel, well, when it's come 10. to finishing in this leg, it's been a little bit of a mess. Double two. Eight. Inside. And so Morris returns this time for 17. 17. Talk about that big one. I'll take a step back. It's been good on that side of the board this week. 13. And the situation. Is it just two. starting to get into his head? Well... Despite all the maverick ways of going for things, that even Daniel Lee can't find another way of going for two. No score. Tommy so we go four. on. 72. Daniel requires 70. Has to shuffle across. Too far across. And now to the madhouse. He moves along again. Game show on the third. He's doing the hokey cokey. But he gets the leg. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, played well, he's got to get a jail card first. early doors Lee. here today in Group A. I think Lee must know as well how vital 
on 180. It is that he won this match. And he's coming a bit tight as well. And always no, when you have a scrappy fine. leg, your opponent will then go and jump on you with a 180. 140. And kicking and kicking and kicking with the line in sight. Nine one eighties now for Morris in this group. A campaign. He's now looking on the homeward stretch. One hundred and forty-five. <laughs> I thought he was going to go for another trouble twenty day. He goes so quickly, you just don't know where he's going. And in the blink of an 59. eye, he could well get it done. This could Coming be for ten data to win four nil. Well, that's not the worst miss in the world. Four. But double 16 goes a begging. Not to be something he needs to worry about this time with Daniel Lee back on 210. 40. Tommy required 32. Get over the line to go back to the top. Go Tommy Morris the is the top boy Tommy once again Morris. in Group A. He gets the better of Daniel Lee by four legs to nil. Moves on to plus 19 on the legs difference. 13 clear in that metric of Patrick Mark, courtesy of that success. It was a game again played by missed doubles, but it's Morris who is the victor. Next up, Patrick Mart against Thibaut Tricol. Hello again, three games down here at the Modus Super Series on Wednesday and top spot has already changed hands in Group A. As you can see, Tommy Morris has returned to the summit after he had that 4-0 win over Daniel Lee before the break following the 4-1 defeat of Patrick Mart by his fellow 
Netherlands native Michel van der Horst in his open. At least Rashton beat Thibaut Tricol as well in a battle at the bottom. But up next, it's the third meeting of the week between Mart and Tricol. Now, Mart has won both of their matches in the group so far. And the stats suggest that's because he's managed to turn the tons into two treble turns more frequently and has finished magnificently in those two previous meetings. More than 57% double success is exceptional. One quick noteworthy point, though both games have been 1-4-3 and Treacle has mismatched darts in each of them. Right, let me hand you back to your commentary team. Scott Mitchell is alongside Henry Deacon. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. And so the twists and the turns continue to develop here at the live lounge in Portsmouth. Patrick Mark, the overnight leader, has now seen himself seconded as far as the group is concerned. And he'll feel as if he's now in must-win territory with Tommy Morris at the top of the table. Defeat here, and he could be two points behind. He'd be effectively four points behind as well because of the legs difference gap okay, first leg between Patrick him and the man first. from Paul. And Game he takes on, on Thibaut Tricol, who... Right. Similar to the meetings between the pair over the first two days, had missed big darts at double against Lisa Ashton in a 4-3 defeat. In fact, it's been a day so far where no one's really got out the traps flying. You can tell that the 60. sense of occasion that today brings, knowing that someone's going to go through, knowing that your fate for the week is going to be sealed today. In fact, 45. Lisa Ashton has posted the highest average of anyone so far. And that's only an 81.6. Yeah, some great 100. stats there from my co-commentator. Yeah, good, good spot. We know that Thibaut's been starting slowly and... Patrick 60. And his second lowest average of the week there by... by a Nats Dudar on, on his lowest in his first match. 35. And Thibaut's the sort that maybe... As a player, you do get fed up with getting beat 100. by the same bloke. And so this is a chance he knows to turn the tide and... 100. Patrick, 156. It's only so long you go on missing match doubles against a player, you know? Double 18 to get off to a flying start. 138. 156 nearly went for March. A call 106 for the break. That would have settled him down. Unbelievably, he no, will get he back. Ain't. Patrick, you require 18. One in his hand. Ten. Double four is wired. He may require eight. And that's a target Tracol aims at. And Tracol hits. He's on the first leg. T right Tricol. in the corner. It was close to a bust. But it's go big or go bust. Tracol went big. Tracol's in the lead. Tracol gets the break. First. You talk about the deviation in the Patrick Mark performance 60. in that first game. In fact, if you compare it to what we saw from him yesterday, it's actually 12 points down. His average for the day was 89.48. That included an 80 average in his last game against Michel van der Horst. He had 60 darts at double, converted 33% of them. Important stat for me is every time he plays Tommy Morris at that quicker pace, it's 90 plus. So it shows that Morris's game actually suits the speed of Morris's game. Suits the speed of Mart's game. And the other thing I like, and, and John Lockin sort of said it, the operations director of the ADC out in Holland and for Europe, he said if this guy gets a bit of a head of steam up, he can produce. And that's exactly what he did yesterday. And he's producing moments of it again today. Just taking time to find his feet. But these are all valuable, valuable lessons for these players. You don't see on the television too much. To be in this situation in the group and teach yourself how to handle it. And he set up a beautiful 32. Cole's gone 161 the opposite direction than everybody else goes. It's now 32 for Mart, and it's been his doubles today that he's no struggled score. on. And once again, 78. he's given Tricol a chance at 78. 
which ironically, between the pair, was the amount of darts they missed combined yesterday. 58. Actually, really? 32. 78 missed darts at double from both. Game shot. But that double eight there. is found for Patrick Mark to Mart. level up at one apiece. So it gets Patrick to throw so first. So fortunate Game. to get back. I would say deservedly. For me, this one hundred. This guy's kind of a hidden gem, isn't he? He's, he's, this is this is what the ADC is all about: is to find these guys in their local pubs, eighty-three pubs, clubs, cafe bars. If you're out in Europe, wherever there's a dartboard, one hundred. Try and help them become a global star and. The Modus Super Series is definitely, as we've seen in the past, from the online stuff down to 41. Southampton, down to here. They are producing, and they are now players from here in the Pro Tours. One. Let's have a chat about Thibaut Tricol and the way the dart enters the ball. Because it goes in so flat, it can actually be a help whether it goes underneath or above. 100. Case in point there. Well, I think there is an optimum hike for a player that it, you're able to do both, 60. in my opinion. Um, a, a, a big, taller guy like me, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, you know, the dart over the top causes an absolute problem for no, me, and, and I have to move out. Uh, but the dart underneath, I can get over the top, and I think I think that Tebow is probably that, old, that ultimate, the proper height that... He can do either, and the way that he throws it, he throws from eye level, means that he can do either, and he's shown a great example of it here, where he's been underneath hey, and five. then gone over the top of required. that 12. previous dart. A bit like saying six foot four is the ideal height for a goalkeeper. No score. Possibly, I know, but five it's foot required. two isn't. 97. So yes, you could be right. I know I couldn't be a goal. Well, I tried to be a goalkeeper. That didn't work. You've got to want to stop the ball, mate, and get in the way of something coming at you. Game shot on the third. Well, Patrick there. Mark can't Team get in the way of that. Goal. There's no way of blocking shots in darts. Chacol breaks. Well, leads 2-1. to throw first. Game on. Now, at this stage in proceedings, as a player, when you've lost the two previous days, 45, and you get... A shot like that, after your player has been missing, you start to believe it's your turn to win. You start convincing yourself that, hey, it could be my day today. And no matter what the other player does to you, you just keep believing it's your day to beat him. With Tricol, we know we haven't seen the best of him consistently yet. We've seen spells of brilliance from him. We've seen games of brilliance from him, especially towards the latter end of days. Could there be a point this week where everything clicks together and once it does, hey, the rest three. of the field need to be wary of him? I have him down as, as quite a clever dart player, to be fair. And I think one hundred for him, the situation when it goes 0-0, zero, zero, no matter which group he's in, he can't wait to restart this week. He can't wait 45. to you put the first day behind him and, and the slow starts of the week. He knows where it's gone wrong. He's not a daft dart player. 59. So I think he's looking forward to being zero and starting again. If you hope he's not zero in the points column in this particular match, but he might be pegged back to two apiece. If Patrick Mark can take out tops. 42. To be required, 132. And if he does manage to win this one, he puts himself on 10 points, along with Daniel Lee and along with Van der Horst, and does actually put himself in with a shout. Although he'll be a game ahead of everybody else, 20. he puts himself in with a shout of trying to take that last game group B place. Flag. Patrick Mark. But Patrick Mark gets the break back. 16 data on double 10 to level up at two apiece. Fifth leg, it's Patrick to throw first. Game on. The pondering of the thoughts inside the mind of Thibaut Tricol as he walks back along the hockey. 58.
If he gets to Group B, a bit like what we were saying a couple of minutes ago, he'll be a preeminent danger. The clocks can be reset. 100. The mind frame can be reset. It's effectively a new tournament. 100. And the mindset's in the back room. Morris is obviously looking for Tricol to win this game. And then you've got Daniel Lee and Van der Horst. 85. Who are wanting Mark to win the game. Uh, the scenarios, the scenarios of, of playing in group format. 98. Darts. 100. Oh, I have this saying about this competition that if you don't win group A, you've got to treat it as an irrelevance because everybody's on the same page when it comes to Thursday and Friday, respectively. 140. The likes of Steve West and Lee Shuen, they're on the same amount of points as the previous players. They just haven't played a game yet. And so that's the way you've got to treat it as a mindset. Yeah, agreed. 100. How do you recall? 105. Mark. 105 here. Stay down there. He's gone on the eight for double top. 85. Just Can on the underside. 121. For Carl, we'll be looking to take the 1-2-1. One, one. Trouble 17. It's the bullseye. 87. Patrick Rather Rick rush that 20. a little bit. I think game this will be game, game over. Flag. As I was Patrick right. Mart. So Patrick Mark takes the lead for the first time in this match. And it's back-to-back -back 16 so darters that sees him it. now on Game. the hill against Jacol. Yeah, settled in. His average is up there where he was 55. yesterday. Started just only a couple of points off it. I think he's starting to settle into the day. 100. You know, I said he missed 14, 4 zero darts at double yesterday, Patrick Mark. Well, he's missed 14, 1 4 in this particular game. 125. He was very impressive yesterday with the 5 at 5 and uh, really did boss it. Was very, 95. very positive. His biggest strength hey, is the scoring power, and we're going to. Emphasize it here by showing you the scoring power pack. 13 scores of a ton or more. 96. Yeah, very impressive. Over the five legs. 140. Oh, catches one back in the 140s column. 60. Do you require 98? So it'd be 78 now, treble 18. 78. Gets it on the second stab at it. Big 150 here, and it's not going to go, but he will be looking to leave hey, something you tidy. And you, may require 20. you need the big numbers when you're going for those trebles. Rodney Harrington hey, shakes his play. head. Two Thibaut Tricol just stares down the double 10 to take us to a decider. Seven from final leg is Patrick. The to bump for the fist from the pair. But what is a big leg in terms of both qualification to finals night and qualification for Group B? And you have to say, under the pressure, under the situation, that is a superb start, a 140. 140. Matched up in kind. The scenarios are this. Patrick Mart, if he wins, will go back two points clear at the top of the table. For Thibaut Tricol, if he can win 40. this game, then he will move on to 10 points. He's going to have to bridge a bit of a gap in terms of the legs difference from Daniel Lee and Michel van der Horst to secure third spot and a place in Group B on Thursday 50. and Friday night, respectively. And that could be a slip of a visit, which may well open up the door for Patrick Mart. 100. That was a good last treble from Ma there. Oh, he started downstairs. It will go upstairs now to try and leave 176. And he masterfully does. The mini turn of throw, but two trebles 140, here. 140, Jimmy, 170. And the 170 you feel has to go, and it's not going this time. And so Patrick Mark returns. He comes back for 81, but it's going to be under the severest of pressure. As he faces the severest of pressure at the top of the table.
from Tori Morris. The bullseye doesn't go. Timo and so Chacol wants double 18 to inflict a second straight defeat upon the man who started the day at the top of the table. 18. Patrick Garakwa, 25. A grab of the heart from Thibaut Trickle there. That's 25 for Mark and escape from danger. 17. And he's failed to escape. Thibaut Garakwa, 18. Double nine for Trickle. 18. You can't get closer. Game Before you find match. your way in Thibaut and you Trickle. find your win. And Thibaut Tricol is a 4-3 victor against Patrick Mark. The man who began the day at the top of the table will now be precariously looking at what Tommy Morris is doing now from the passenger seat position. A 4-3 defeat to Tricol. 17 missed darts a double, the main reason for that. And so the Frenchman gets a victory there to move him on to 10 points in the group, intensifying that race as far as a Group B position is concerned on Thursday and Friday, respectively. And so following that defeat for Patrick Mark, it means that Tommy Morris has the opportunity to move two points clear at the top of the group as he takes on Michel van der Horst. And we'll be watching live coverage of that after this short break. Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team off the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. 
Tickets can be booked via this QR code or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. It would be good to have you here on Saturday. And here there is a two-player fight to book a ticket to finals night going on. That's between Patrick Mart, who has lost both his matches so far today, and Tommy Morris, who enjoyed an emphatic 4-0 win in his opener. Morris, though, will be more than aware of the ability of Michel van der Horst. The Dutchman did him a favour by beating his title rival in the first match of today, but he also dented Tommy's hopes by beating him yesterday. Morris had won Monday's meeting 4-0, only to be beaten 4-1 in Tuesday's tussle. So you can see the averages there balance out at around 89 apiece. But Morris did actually average over 100 in that Monday matchup. It's been all or nothing so far, effectively, in the battles between the duo. But if Morris can win this mini series, he's going to put himself in a very strong position to take top spot. In commentary for this and all of today's games are Henry Deacon and former world champion Scott Mitchell. Thanks, Murph. Yeah, I think I know my line of thought towards this one if i was in morris's shoes i would be thinking the stats there there is okay, just so like nothing Tommy between them first Game so my on. line of thought would be i just need to be one dart better whether it's the one dart to make it four three no, or the one dart not. to make it four one you just don't want to be one dart worse in this one and michelle van der horst as you rightly say he's been around a lot longer and he's he's no he's got the experience 100. and He's also got his tail up after beating the top of the group man overnight, Patrick Mart. So nine, is this a day nine. that we're going to see Michel van der Horst produce his best? And remember, he is fighting for Group B Dars. If he wins this game, he moves on to 12 nine, points. And we temporarily go above Daniel Lee, who is in action in our sixth game against Lisa Ashton. 98. One of those days where there's plenty to play for at either side of the table, but the top end and that top spot could be over very shortly because if Tommy Morris wins this, he will open up a two-point gap upon Patrick Mark. They meet in Game 7, and if both those results go the way of Tommy Morris, he would have a four-point lead with four left to play for and a superior legs difference by some margin. Double Game 12 the first leg. for a 14 data to kick off in style. It's Tommy Morris, ladies and gentlemen. He just does good stuff. Second leg is Michelle to throw first. Game on. Nine, see nine. Those have known Tommy for a long time. He really is in the form of his life. The last six months, he's... He's changed and developed as a player, and he's and he's taken that next step up. Sometimes you still have to go back down that step and then come back up again, but at the hey, moment, he fine. really is riding a quest of the wave, and he is playing some super, super darts. 101. Well, get the one off at some point, Tommy. Those players that have ever played 41. the game and know when you been in your best form of your life or whatever, no matter when it is, it's just a it's just a lovely place to be. One hundred and twenty. When you fall off it, it's how quickly you can then get back up there to it because it's it's a delay that can can Fish, mess you yet. up for a long time. It, it really is. It's uh because you get disappointed in yourself when you're not doing what you have been doing. And you can stop 60. yourself getting back up that step, but at this particular moment in time that's not happened to Tommy, and here he is again on. One hundred and eighty. Tommy, you're one hundred and twenty. Climbing the ladder to the top. The very, Going very to top. The second leg. For a two-nil lead. Tommy Morris. He reached the loftiest double. He may be reaching the loftiest of positions in this so group. Is Tommy to throw first. He's halfway Game towards on. the finishing mark. If he wins this, 
by four legs to nil. He moves on to plus 23 99. in terms of legs difference. That would be an 18-leg swing upon Patrick Mart in second place. 58. And maybe at that point, we could be looking at the top 10 best 59. legs difference records in Group A. One hundred and twenty-one. Say, Michelle van der Horst will not go away. One hundred and twenty there from Morris is just, you know, showed that I actually knew what I was talking about. The boy is at the top of his confidence. Sixty. And those sorts of things go when you're very confident. Confidence is a 100. preference of the habitual voyeur, which is known as dark life. Yes, it is, actually. <laughs> you probably hey, stop laughing a minute. I'll try and talk. Fifty-five. That's the stupidest thing I've ever said. Yeah, probably. In my presence, it is. Yes, definitely. Tommy I'll go with that. Eighty-eight. Well, this has been anything from silly by Tommy Morris. It's been excellent so far. Go it has been Jordan splendid further. so far. Tommy Morris. Three out of three on the doubles. He races into a 3 0 lead with an average just under 96. Well, and he could well first. be racing his way yeah. towards the finishing line, not just in this match, but maybe in terms of this group. 100. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Henry. I'm speaking as a. As a fellow teammate for this fella, we've got to... 125. We've got to uh, let the group evolve, but... Wow, well, wow, well, if he can finish this one off here. A what a start to day three in Group A this young man has had. 83. Eighty. One hundred. Just ticking his way down in the leg. But Van der Hoor says his innate ability to find maxes when it counts. One hundred and seventy-seven. I'm sure he requires sixty. What a response from Morris! So pressure on the Van der Horst sixty. Aims on the fourth. No pressure at all. Michelle Van der Horst. No pressure at all. What a lovely shot there, and shows his experience. Michelle Van der Horst there. Fifth leg is Tommy to throw first. It's one eighty in that leg. It actually takes him to the top of the one eighty hitters in this group. Fifteen one eighties he hit. That's Michelle van der Horst in this group, and that just goes to show that it's the outer ring that has been his problem. Is this number 16? What? Yes, it is. Scribble out the 15. And if he can make it 17 45. in this visit, we might have a little bit of fun here at the live lounge. 44. Well, I put the mockers on that. One hundred. You ever commentated on a nine, Scott? No, I missed a few, but uh, <laughs> I missed a few on double twelve in burying tournaments when I was, you know, in my prime. Um, but yeah, not not commentated on one. One hundred and thirty-four. But in the room when they've happened, I was in the uh, I was at the at the BIC in Bournemouth when Barney did his in the uh, Premier League. I was there. And most of the audience were at the bar. Oh, the room was nearly empty. Is that because you got your order in first? No, no, it's because I wasn't drinking. I was taking a group full of people. They were to go and get me a Diet Coke, they were. Climbing the ladder. Morris has already hit this. One hundred. The Vander Horse can't. Tommy requires so Morris, to really stamp his authority upon proceedings, he's going to get... A dart of his own at tops. 
Stitz back to recompose. 50. But he can't fire home. Shall we require 20? And that's the first start at a double. He's missed this match. Could he be punished? Game shot. He has been there. indeed. Michelle van der Horst. a throw for Michelle van der Horst. Both lads now in the 90s. 96 average so for Morris. 91 for van der Horst. Van der Horst back in the lipstick again. 140. Prolific treble hitters. 60. Beautiful first start. Beautiful second. 140. Almost the perfect third. Back to back 140s for Hander Horst. Really has found his rhythm. 95. Morris is doing no different than he's done before. It's just a case that Michelle van der Horst has upped his pace and upped his ante 100. to get back in this one. He said yesterday his highest TV average ever 60. was yesterday so 121. against Tommy Morris with his 92.39 better in the 89 that he had against me. Fifth decided our masters back in 2014. You can tell Scott's over 140. I'm over it now. It's that Tommy's got the mantle now of holding. Uh... Game show on the sick flag. Michelle van der Horst. Van der Horst takes us all the way. Double 16, four 15. It's free apiece. Seventh and final. And it is Tommy van der Horst continuing this role of speed. Spoiler in this group. 100. He is slashing hopes and dreams of every single passing game. He's the dream snatcher. <laughs> Indeed. Impressive thing for me on this game is the checkout stats. Check out 75% for Morris, 60% for Van der Horst. We have only had seven. nine darts at a double for these six legs. Impressive indeed. 100. One hundred and nineteen. Morris keeps thinking he just gets away. Forty-five. Horst. Keeps dragging him back in. And this is a chance for Van der Horst. And it's a massive chance for Van der Horst. 140. He is like Mike Sullivan, the way that he ruins people's dreams. 95. Shall we require 90? Is it Michel Inc? Trouble 15 would have left him tops. 26. Tommy require 83. So it'll be treble 17, 16 for the ball. Big, big dart for Morris. 58. And once again, he hits the 25, 64. going for the ball. Treble eight is double top for the match for Van der Horst and open the group right up again. Go and he hits it. On the Last dart. Michelle van der Horst. Michelle van der Horst takes the match. 4-3. His fellow countryman will be in the players' room, shaking him by the hand, I'm sure, when he returns. What a quality affair that was. We'll be taking a short break, and we'll be back with Lisa Ashton against Daniel Lee.
Welcome back to what is turning out to be a dramatic day of darts here at the Moda Super Series. Before the break there, Tommy Morris surrendering a three-leg lead to lose out to Michel van der Horst when if he'd have won his one more leg in that match, he would effectively just need to beat Patrick Martin in the next game. However, now they are level on points and it's still very much all to play for. Great win for van der Horst who moves up to third. But a little break from that battle at the top of the table now as we get a third meeting of the week between Daniel Lee and Lisa Ashton. And as you can see, Lee has won both of their meetings so far this week. Ashton with 30% on the checkouts. Lee better in that department. Level on the 180s, it's been pretty sort of low scoring in the games and Lee just edging the average as well there at 85. Exactly the same amount of tons, similar amount of 140s, but Lee getting the important thing, which is the wins. Can he get another one? We are going to find out in the company of Henry Deacon and Scott Mitchell. Yeah, thanks, Murph. Yeah, this one up, you know, the way Lisa played in the last game, a potential banana skin for Dan Lee. A game that he'll want to play at this stage of the day to try and get a bit of scoreboard pressure on van der Horst. Okay, first leg is Lisa to throw first. He has a better leg count Game slightly. On. And Lisa started the day well. 60. Into more 180s in her first game than she'd hit all week. So is that going to be a bad omen for Lee? Stay with us for the next few minutes and we will be able to 60. unravel the mystery. Piecing the jigsaw puzzle together. 140. There's definitely a different feel about the play of Lisa Ashton today. Maybe just be a little bit more zip, just a little bit more energy. 95. She just looks more comfortable in her demeanour in that first one. 100. Throw the darts with a little more force. Being a little bit more direct. 52. You know, back in the day, a fella playing a lady in a pub league or whatever was very unusual. 52. And very difficult for the fella. But we're now seeing, with the opportunities that are coming along, more of the ladies and the men hey, mixing together and, and playing against one another. And it's a sport that has no boundaries. If you're good enough, you're good enough regardless. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, 60. I think the days of players not wanting to play lady players or not playing well against lady players have got to go because these great lady players like Lisa Ashton are here. 60. Causing big problems for the guys. Well, it's, it's evolution. It's the way the game has, has changed and changed for the better. And it's a case of, well, it's, it's, well, it's like it or lump Lisa it, really. 56. Because... As the game continues to develop, as Ashton goes to double 18 here, 20. it doesn't go. But as the game develops, I mean, you can see with the women's series how year on year the standard continues to drive up and drive up. 100. Like Lisa anything, it'll 36. grow, it'll evolve, and we're going to see everything really grow from a base. And remember, it's still a... 28. Still Daniel a fledgling sport 80. when you think about it. Like all women's sport. And that's as he, Daniel Lee goes to tops, tops here. 60. Not quite successful in that attempt. At least you require eight. Women's sport will be the biggest sports story of the 2020s. There's no doubt about that. It already is. Yeah, I agree with that. Six. Lisa once again Daniel having Lee six starts at a double and not converting. Game shot on the first leg. Daniel Lee. Daniel Lee's thinking in his head, you give me enough chances, Lisa, and I'll take it. But so yeah, the women's Daniel sport, I mean, particularly at darts, Game you know, on. back in the day, you know, it's Maureen Flowers, it's it's Trina Gulliver, it's Dieter Hedman have, have, have led the way. Lisa's then come along. 111. And taking that to another level. And now we have Fallon and Bo Grease. They're just endless amounts. And who'd have thought that we'd have a PDC oh, ladies he's tour? He's Five years ago, it just didn't look possible because there weren't enough ladies doing it. And now it's being well supported and, and being added to. 105. 
Well, once again here, Daniel Lee with the last dart. And both his opening two visits in this match has gone down for the bullseye. 100. Does he do it again? 97. One hundred and forty. One hundred. Daniel Lee's new nickname should be Spotter's Nightmare. We could get that on a shirt, couldn't you? That'd look good. One hundred. I hope you're not paying per letter. And you require eighty-eight. 48 for tops. Game shot. Excellent from Daniel Lee. Daniel Lee. 2 0 Lee. 14 data. Lee's Lisa Ashton by two legs to nil. Can move Good himself Lisa onto to 12 points first. because of the Game legs on. difference and move himself above Michelle van der Horst in the table. Going into the third round, which will kick off with the battle at the top. Tommy Morris, Patrick Mark. One hundred and twenty one. There we go with the overhead shot. You can see the trajectory. Eighty three. Oh, Lisa Ashton's dart. And you can see that even though Daniel Lee Eighty four. Being a left hander, the, the the point of the dart kicks to the left. It it sort of which is handy for a left-hander because obviously you can use it at times and that was perfect timing from our production crew on that overhead of the 180 for Lisa Ashton. And it leaves her on a finish after nine to half the arrears to two one. She's going to get six from here. And she's going to need the lot. 59. One hundred and forty. At least you require ninety-four. From a leg that looked like it was Ashton's all over, a one forty from Daniel Lee brings him right back in it. Seventy-six left. Fifty-four. Tidied Daniel up nicely, but ninety-eight. Lisa Ashton fans will have the fingers crossed. He's gone ninety-eight. Hit the treble twenty. Went strongly at the double 19, so it's now been split. 82. Ashton, three Lisa more darts at a double. 40. And that double is tops. Game shot that double leg. is found. And that lead is cut in half to 2 1. A bit well, like their meetings to throw first. over the first Game. couple of days. Not much to separate them statistically. Just on that double stat, one from eight for Lisa. 58. She was there first in that first leg, wasn't she? All the damage happened. 45. Interestingly, she hasn't started a leg down on the 19s today. We saw that as 40. a little bit of a trend on days one and two respectively. That's what I mentioned earlier. I felt she was throwing a little bit more freely and a little bit more comfortable today. Maybe staying up the top on the travel 20s is a sign of that because that's what she's always 100. done during her career when I've watched her. 140. And when she can get it going, she power scores as well as anyone. Five one forties in this game, an average of eighty-eight, and she may well be turning the screw hey, here. Eighty-one for the breakback to level up at two apiece. She's got six and one seven six. Fifty-four. Lisa, you 122. A little bit more 
of that little miscount from Daniel Lee to leave himself on a bogey. 46. Never tidy up there from Lisa with that bullseye shot. Now Lee trying to make the deficit, but he's blocked himself. 58. Heading to the treble 20 and has to switch 76. out to the 18s. That's Ashton. I think you can see from the look on her face what she thinks of that. 50. She's gone for a big 14. It's gone so big. It's a double 14, but it still leaves 26. So it's treble 19 now for Lee. 52. Lisa required 26. And the spot as nightmare continues. <laughs> Game Double 13 the levels it up for Lisa, Lisa Ashton, Ashton. to a piece. Break your throw. We're back on throw in this game. And here's a best of three. To see whether Daniel Lee can move back first. into P3. Double 13. 13 is unlucky for some. Not for Lisa on that occasion. 125. Nothing wrong with 13. I was born on the 13th. Okay, maybe there is something wrong with 13. But was it Friday the 13th? That's the question. It was actually a Sunday. Oh, that's very nice. Mm. 66. The day of prayer. There was definitely some praying that day. Lots of people around you have been praying ever since. 41. Commentated on my first game the day after. 100. <laughs> that, that wouldn't surprise me. Squeaky deeks. 46. Yeah, that bit's never changed. But what's changing in this game is the trajectory of it. Lisa Ashton. Well, she's 60. gone through the gears. And Daniel Lee has kind of just regressed a couple of points in terms of the averages. 60. You Ashton doing what world champions do, and that is make the all-important kick when it matters, and she's made her mid-match move here. 94. Yeah, and that's a super last start from Lisa there. 100. Daniel Lee, Lisa that's a super 56. three darts from him there. Just applying the pressure as Ashton goes to tops. And now tens Game is a friend. And look at the Lisa power Ashton. which that dart went into the board. The point just basically working its way so through the wire Daniel pretty much. Game on. She's on the hill. She leads 3-2. And Daniel Lee needs to hold to send us all the way. And it was a good safe hold to throw as well there from Ashton. Forty-five. A good start from the Daniel Lee. Fifty-six. Chance now. Has to jump all over that. She's in the treble once. Eighty-one. Slight deflection into the one. 137. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel here at the Moda Super Series, the last time Lisa Ashton played, she sat down with our colleague and friend 97. Abigail Davis to talk about her career, her ambitions moving forward. So if you subscribe to the Super Series YouTube channel, you can find that interview on there and you can watch highlights of all the live, of all the action 100. that we show here, as well as live coverage six days a week. So... On top of what we bring you, plenty of bonus content here from the live lounge in Portsmouth as Daniel Lee looks to give us a bonus Daniel deciding leg. 85. 85 to do so. Tops to do so. Game Double 10 found. We go the distance Daniel once Lee. again. It's the third consecutive game. They were going all the way to a decider. Four of the last five have gone the way Seventh of 4 and three. Final leg. It's Lisa to throw first. Game on. 
100. Yeah, you say about the action we can bring you, you can also be here live on Saturday evenings. Just scan that QR code. It sends you over to a website called dartshop.tv. You can get tickets at every single week in Series 4. The Champions Night is Saturday the 5th of August. 58. But if you want a night on the South Coast, we're here in Portsmouth in Hampshire in England. So if you fancy a weekend by the coast, it's beautiful weather at the minute, then that is the QR code you need to scan to take you to dartshop.tv. Also, has various other tickets for various exhibitions and even the world seniors as well. So give that QR code a scan. But 60. we are in the midst of a crucial last leg here as far as Daniel Lee is concerned. Victory here, we're putting back into third spot in the group. But Ashton, if she wins, she moves herself onto eight. 140. And will severely derail the chances of Daniel Lee in playing in Group B. 60. Daniel, you require 140. But he's got six here from 140 to get the job done. He may only need the three. He took this out yesterday, but he's not going to do so again here. 100. Could have possibly have gone top to tops, but decided that the lie was so good, and he took out the 140 with the two trebles for double 10 yesterday. Did 95. that against Thibaut Tricol. Daniel, you require 40. As he looks for tops here to depose of Lisa Ashton. Game shot tops the is match. found for 13 Daniel for Lee. Dan Lee as he moves on to 12 points in the group and he claims his third spot in the group. Daniel Lee gets the better of Lisa Ashton by four legs to three. Ashton, who rallied midway through the match, but it was Daniel Lee who had enough towards the line. A 4-3 victory for him. Sees us complete the second cycle of fixtures for the day. We're going to take a short break. When we return, we have got the battle at the top. It's Morris. It's Matt. It's next.
Well, welcome back. What a day it's been so far. Maybe some edgy stuff today, Scott Mitchell. We'll take a look at the results so far, and they tell a story. Start of the day, Patrick Matt losing his first match, went on to lose his second. All looked good for Tommy Morris, but then he surrendered a three-leg lead against Michel van der Horst. Michel van der Horst has been the proverbial fox in the hen house this morning, hasn't he? He has had a big say in where this could go, this group win. Yeah, beating both of the top two players, having already beaten uh, one of them yesterday as well. So he really has re put the cat among the pigeons. Um, Lisa Ashton getting a win over Thibaut Treacle, but Daniel Lee beating her in the last match. That actually means that Patrick Mart, who was the league leader overnight, is the only player not to win a match so far. Yeah, what a turnaround from five wins yesterday. Is that the pressure of the situation? I think it probably is. But this is the big one. Where is this going to go? The big one is coming up. The table will show you that both of these players are tied on 16 points. Now, we probably thought we'd be in a similar position to this, maybe with more points if both players had won their matches. And I was going to ask you the question whether or not this is the pivotal game, but from what we've seen so far, any game could change the direction of this group. Everybody seems to be stepping up a little today and, and wanting to be involved in that top of the group race. And, uh, you know, you get to a point as a player when you're playing in these groups where you just know that you can't win the group. You let your hair down, you relax a little, and then your good game's starting to come out. And then you're a problem to the guys at the top of the group. Right, let's talk about how the players might be feeling. Tommy Morris having surrendered that three leg lead, missed a bullseye in that last leg decider as well before Van der Horst took out the 64. If he'd have hit that, he'd have been going into this match knowing win it and he'd do enough. How does he dust himself down from that? I think you forget it as fast as it happened. You know, you've had a dart at the bullseye, a little unfortunate. He actually had a dart at tops yesterday to beat Patrick Mart as well. So if he's going to start going down that road, he's going to stop himself. I would advise him to just get on with it, play what's in front of you. And, you know, it's still in his hands where, where he's going to end up. And does that result give Patrick a bit of sort of optimism, having lost his first two matches, so he can turn it around a little bit as well? I think going in with two losses, going into this game against Tommy, who's a fellow top of the group, he would not be wanting to do that as well. You don't want to be your first win against the top man. So, you know, he's still got his little frailties to, that have been there today. Are they going to now be there in this next match too? Mark has won both meetings so far this week, but this is a huge match at the top of the table. Could be winner takes all. That will remain to be seen, but I'll let Scott Mitchell get down to the commentary box to talk you through it alongside Henry Deacon. Chris, thank you. And so this could be the one. This could be the game that dictates the destinies of both Morris and Mart, both on 16 points, both desperate to make it through to Saturday night. But who is able to hold their nerve and keep their cool in this huge encounter? Tommy Morris, the 30-year-old from Poole. He came in as a late replacement for Gordon Mavis, who couldn't make the journey over from Australia. Taking on the debutant, Patrick Mart. From Zwolle in the Netherlands. His first opportunity of this particular stage, of okay, these particular lights. Patrick to throw first. Well, he has been shining bright under the furnace pressure of the live lounge in Portsmouth. There has been one or two wobbles today as the finishing line draws closer. The defeat in his opener to Michel van der Horst. It was a nervy, sluggish affair. It 60. was an improvement against Thibaut Tricol, whose timing was just better. As for Tommy Morris, he got the better of Daniel Lee by four legs to nil. We thought maybe the tide was of a turning, especially after that second defeat for Mark. 60. But then he... Squandered a 3 0 lead against Michel van der Horst to lose 4 3. One. And now that is why we are set fair for this battle royale. This top of the table tungsten title with both players not required. to be prized apart on points. And it is Mart who's got off to a flying start. 41. Leaving a finish after 9, leaving tops after 12, and Tommy Morris can do nothing in reply. 95, but you require 40. Tops for 13. Tops for 1 0 lead. Tens will do the job. Game Tens the will leg. do the job. Patrick and Mart. it is first blood to the Dutchman, Patrick Mart. He leads Tommy Morris by a leg to nil. Scott Mitchell has rejoined myself in the commentary box. An Tommy emphatic start first. from the Dutchman. Yeah, indeed. And uh, one that he'll be Eight pleased about. 
it's a big game and he's won the two previous visit uh, uh, matches so he'll be feeling good about this one and I do feel that the pace of Morris does suit Patrick Mark 60 and that's why he's always excelled against Tommy be interesting 96. to see how he gets when he gets closer to the finishing line what happens when the nerves are jangled? When the butterflies begin to tick over in the stomach, when the arm gets tense, 98. and your mind and body are no longer at one with each other. 135, Patrick, 170. He's left to finish after nine again. He's looking for the fish. He can't find the second treble. And so Morris returns at 84. To level proceedings up. Two twelves. A touch Natchy there from Tommy. Seventy two. Yeah, you important. You'll know the significance of the double twelve goes. It doesn't. That 57. was a nervy last Tommy start. Quiet twelve. If Tommy's watched that, that should calm this start down for him. Game show on the and second What a big day. last start Tommy that Morris. is in this situation. Talk about hold your nerve. That will give him so a lift. Patrick to throw first. Well, it's one of those moments where it could swing the trajectory anywhere because Mark could easily be in a 2 0 lead and be thrown to go up free zip. Although this week it's been seemingly academic. 65. Having a 3 0 lead has actually been the most dangerous scoreline it's felt at times. Yeah, it definitely has. 60. Ninety-nine. This week, Tommy Morris has had 3-0 leads on three occasions, and in two of those three, 40. he's actually gone on to lose the match. One hundred and forty. You won't be thinking of any of those at this point in time, Henry. I don't think. You'll just be thinking of nine to win this game, and he's effectively turned the throw here. So treble twenties now are a must. Well, you could 45. say it was more lost leads than the Scott Mitchell walk on. <laughs> you could say that, but that would be really rude, <laughs> and get you a punch in the air after the show. One hundred and fifty-two. I won't be here tomorrow then. 152 for Morris to get the break in for a 2 1 lead. It's not going to happen, but he's going to set up and set up to some tune. And so it forces Patrick Maher to take out this 151 to hold throw. It's not going to happen. And so Morris may well get the crucial break. 30 An unopportune time for a, pa a bounce record, out for 36. Patrick there. All of a sudden, Patrick Maher has got. Rubber points in one of his darts. Game shot on the third leg. That's a good break Tommy of throw Morris. for Morris. That will give him a lift. Now his routine, he led back to the table now. Have a little sip of water. Let the 10-second well, clock count down. First. Game on. Refocus, and in you go. Patrick Mart had two darts for a 2-0 lead. 96. They came and they went, and Tommy Morris has picked up the pieces ever since. Whoa, but that's a great start to leg four. The perfect start to leg four. Whoa, and that's the perfect response. They're firing haymakers at each other. 96. I think this is a sign that these boys are right into this game. And what a big pickup again from Morris. 100. Tommy the odds are forgetting everything. The pace is getting quicker and quicker. The quality is getting better and better. Although, 40. a slight miss Q on the 48 for Morris. So it's treble 20. He misses. So Morris comes back 65. for 48. Should get two Tommy darts at this. 48. For a 3 1 lead. Oh, 
Double 16. Six Doesn't feet. go. Is that Did another notepad worthy moment? They weren't bad thrown darts. Just didn't go where he wanted them. 50. But he's going to come back. So Sometimes when you hit a dart, get to a double, you hit it that tight. It can affect your opponent as well. And I think in that situation, that's exactly what happened. Game show on the That first was a nice guy. You can Morris. hear the celebration of Guan from Tommy Morris. He knows the significance. He knows the significance of the missed doubles from Patrick, Patrick Mark. And so does he. You can see the look of concern on his face. And there's a reason why. Because it wouldn't just be points that he would be behind on. There is a severe gap to bridge in terms of the legs difference. As things stand, the gap between the pair is 13 points on the legs 60. difference. If Tommy Morris gets this done in this leg, there'd be 16 points to bridge with two games remaining. The maximum you can swing in one round is eight. Yeah, the go on call there from Tommy Morris. I've never seen him do that before. I lied. He has. He does it all the time, especially on the big legs. I know he's into this game now because of that reaction. But what you can't do 60. is let those emotions take over because this leg's a bit a bit slower for him. No, the, the, the thing is here, when you get a 3-1 lead in such an important match as this, 41. what you can do is start, try, start, try to start throwing safe. And you can't be safe. You've got to attack, attack, attack. You're going 140. You're effectively going against the instincts that put you in that position. If you start 44. trying to throw safe... The trebles start to elude you. Well, it's eluded Morris in this leg up to this point. 100. Had you record 96. half heart attempt at the double 18, double 81. top from Matt there. And this is a big 81 for Morris. Not to be this time. 25. Patrick, you require 40. To extend this game. Game Tops is found leg. for Mark. Patrick it's 3-2. And this is the crucial leg for Tommy Morris because this is the one he's got the darts in. This is the one where he can get it done with the serve See to seal the points. To, first. Game on. to open up the gap. And to effectively put him on the hill. 60. Bit of head shake in there from Morris. Not normal for 60. him. Sixty. Shows how tense this moment is. Sixties to open. One hundred and forty. That's a big, big dart from Mart. Hey, it's you won. I mean, he slowed his pace down a little bit, and that's making him pick his darts. 60. He's not out of this leg with that visit of 60 from Mart. 59. 140. How big a 140 could that be? And how quickly is the momentum swaying in this game? Good response on Morris, but it is Mark first to the 101. 81 left. Can't find the trouble 19. And so Morris is going to get a go for the match. 45. Tommy, record 104. To move too clear of the top. Couldn't find the trouble 20 to leave tops. And so Mark's 32. going to return to send us to a last leg decider. 56. Burns a dart. So it's only one at tops. Game only on needs one at tops. Patrick Mark. And so a crucial 501 point shootout ensues here at the live lounge in Portsmouth. Final leg, it's Patrick one with Patrick Mark and Tommy Game Morris. On. No, if they win, we'll go top of the table on points. We have just a couple more games to play after this. They put themselves 41. effectively on the hill. 
What a start for Morris against the darts. It's like I said, he's just up the pace a little on that throw. But he's enticed his opponent to do the same. They kind of been going with one another. 140. That was frighteningly quick. That was six seconds from the retrieval of the mark darts to Tommy Morris throwing 100. his last. The throwing time was probably around three seconds. 26. Maybe that was too quick. Maybe that was an error. He had turned the throw up to that point, hadn't he? 60. And that's such a crucial leg. And that's a clever dart from Patrick Mark. 40. Patrick Mark, 160. Morris has got a hope now. 100. Tommy, Mark, 150. But he gets a chance. This is the chance. Trouble fifth, 90. Oh, it's a little bit wild. 87. Patrick Mark, 160. It's marked. Marching again. Double 10. 50. But Patrick Tommy cannot Reguard make the summit 68. once more. As Morris gets his own match start. Gets his own opportunity. Go and takes his opportunity. Match. And look at what Tommy it means Morris. to Tommy Morris. As he moves clear again at the top of the table. Patrick Mark had his opportunity to claim the match himself. A couple of match starts coming and a going. But Tommy Morris, a 4-3 victor. He moves himself two points clear. Maybe just as crucially, 15 legs clear on the legs difference as well. He could almost touch Saturday night's final now. We're going to take a short break. When we return, Thibaut Tracol up against Dan Lee will be our centre of attention.
Welcome back, and I hope you've got your breath back after that top of the table tussle. More drama here at the Super Series, and after it, Tommy Morris, as you can see, is two points clear of the man he's just beaten, Patrick Mart, who missed match starts in it before that 68 checkout from Morris. Got him over the line, and that 15 leg difference in his favour is effectively worth an extra point. Well, next up, the battle for Group B resumes, and Thibaut Treacle could make it a three-way tie on 12 points, but Daniel Lee could put four between himself and the Frenchman and really get a grip on the third place that he currently occupies. Let me hand you back to our comms team, if they've got their breath back, of Henry Deacon and Scott Mitchell. Thank you very much, Murph. Yeah, we had to dim the lights just for a couple of seconds and just recompose ourselves after that thrilling end to the previous match between Tommy Morris and Patrick Mark. But we're really looking forward to this one because it's another big battle that ensues. And sometimes this can be the most pivotal battle of the week because, yes, the top spot qualifies you for Saturday night. But actually, if you don't okay, qualify for group B first. from this group, it could actually Game stop on. your passage of getting into Saturday night's finale. Because remember, it's three from five in group B, two from six in group C. And this week, we have a very, very good no, lineup for the Thursday and Friday afternoon session here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. One hundred and forty. So after the last game, Morris knows that he will be through to Saturday 60. by winning one of his remaining two games. I wonder if he knows that sat in the players' room. Do you want to know or not want to know? Because there's some players that would rather just go up there, just win no, the games and see what happens later. I'm one of those. I'd rather not know. I don't overcomplicate things. It's a dark match. I've got two dark matches left and I want to win them both. Yeah, that Group C hey, involves Brian Harrington, Shane McGurk, who made a Saturday night here the last time he was here in Series 3, and Jack Main, who missed a dart at the bullseye to qualify for Champions Week last time out. 92. That's a Group B. Lee Shewan, who keeps getting better and better every time we see him here at the Super Series. Steve West, who qualified for Champions Week last time out. Now he missed out on Champions Night last time out. 99. And Dan Reed, who... Made it for a Champions Week in the previous Live League format. Played in the finale champion of Champions format before he moved to the Super Series. So, if you think Group A is tough, wait till you see the couple of days to come. 92. Do you mean require 164? I'm still in mixed feelings about whoever wins Group A in any week, whether it's an advantage or a disadvantage. 120 for me this week. Daniel, you're required. If Morris could get through, I think it would be an advantage for him. He'd been away all weekend with Dorset and the excitement of Dorset over the weekend. Well, that was a very low 40. dart on the 20. That was Hamilton S from Daniel 36. Lee. And you've got to be accurate with that dart, but it's actually not a bad play if you know that you're definitely going to get it below. It's also a sign of confidence. Andy Hamilton did it back in his pomp, back in his day, where he aimed the dart below the treble Daniel bed because his darts stand up to attention so it doesn't block the top's target. Well, there'd be no blockers here because he's got the clean bed to aim at. No score. Yeah, my chosen method is to try and throw it one side or the other so it leaves a, a gap. I still think throwing at half of the top piece is bigger than throwing at the middle of the bottom piece. Um, sometimes yeah, I get it was wrong. on the first leg. Thibaut Trico. Actually got it wrong last night against Jared Cole. I had 16 left and hit a big five. Well done in the Southampton Dart Series. So there we go. Daniel to throw first. Game on. I wasn't going to bring that up. I know, but you mentioned it off air. And I think that I've just got to own the moment and say that I did it. So I brought it 100. to the end. 100. Perhaps not a surprise Simon Whitlock won that event. Actually, it is, because he's keeping <laughs> He doesn't win them that 76. often. Um, you know, finals week the other week, the guy we just saw, Tommy Morris, beat him 7-2. Um, so, yeah. It's, uh, oh, it's so competitive. So competitive. 58. Southampton Dart Series. It's, uh, yeah, pretty impressive. Just to give you a little bit of background information on that, the tournament is won by... One of our producers here at the Super Series. And actually at the beginning of the process when we were 
having to use a lot more local players because obviously the travel gateways were still restricted because of COVID. It was actually a little bit of a no, breeding it's... ground and a training ground for players. If they proved themselves in that particular competition, got call-ups to play Group Bs and Group Cs in the Super Series. And it's where we've seen the likes of Ryan Finesse shine and come from. 41. Yeah, Scotty Walters, Chaz Barstow, Richie North, Martin Grierson, yeah, Tommy Morris. Uh, there's 77. been a few that have come through there. And uh, yeah, like I say, I've started playing it in the last few weeks and wow, it's lifted my game. Because if you don't do it, no, you just get out. It's simple as that. I've played twice in that competition and perhaps you won't be surprised to know I haven't won a leg. No, I'm not surprised at all. But if you were talking on it, you'd have been the best one in the room. Well, Chris Murphy wasn't there, we so. <laughs> Tots for Lee for one apiece. Fives. 35. Inside. And so Jacol has an opportunity 100%. to break the throw and to double his advantage to 2-0. He's going to get a dart, or at least he should get a dart. He is at double 16. 94. And that would have been a sick enough for Daniel Lee, who gets a second opportunity. Double two. Game from the second. To level up. Daniel one, Lee. One. And if Daniel can claim victory here, well, that race for third spot would be pretty third much in his hands. He'd be first. four points Game clear on. with Tiva Tracol. He'd be... Two points clear of Michelle van der Horst, who plays Lisa Ashton up next. 84. So he will have a better legs difference. And as we come to the end of the day, even three or four legs is a massive 60. advantage. We go back to the old adage, win big, lose small. One hundred and forty. Forty-three. Sixty-eight. Sixty. There you go. I was back in the 60. 99. Takes the 9 off nicely, leaving the 110 for himself again. 140. Do you require 110? 74. Opportunity missed, but he's going to come back to Cole for the 2 1 lead. 100. Do we require a bit 36. of pressure with Lee on 98? Now it could get awkward on double nine. Game shot. Awkward. On the third leg. What does that Team mean? Jacole leads 2 1. For Only with the throw, nothing for first. Daniel Lee to, to worry about just yet. I find Daniel Lee fascinating to watch. You never know what he's going to do. He really is the spotter's nightmare. A bit like the uh, sniper's 40. nightmare is the fellow that's got the stone in his shoe. <laughs> but, um, yeah. It doesn't seem to be rhyme or reason One, of why he moves out. It's just sometimes he moves out to find another target, maybe, because he's not hitting the target that he's going for. And 60. Yeah, he's... Uh... <laughs> he's... Uh... Spotter's nightmare. Yeah, he's a spotter's nightmare. 
90. And the reason he's difficult to spot for, he's quite a tall lad. And so when he's looking at the treble 20, he's looking down. And when he's looking at the treble 19, he's looking down. So spotters tend to try and look at the whites of their eyes and see where they're looking. And, and unfortunately, he tends to be looking in the same place. So basically, you don't want him to be wearing shades. No. I'm reliably informed. This is a good visit. 121. When he goes to look at the 19s, he just slightly tips his head forward and you've got a job to see his eyes past the glasses, the frame of the glasses. So I'll be looking out for that. 45. But that's how difficult it is to spot for some players. Oh, double two. 122. Well, now this will be interesting because Thibaut Chacol is all the way back on 256 and Daniel Lee is left stuck in the madhouse. Once again. 40. Is that good board Daniel, management? Two. If it goes in, a perfect board management. Game See? shot the four flag. He knows exactly what Daniel he's doing. Lee. I think that's a case of backing yourself. I think Daniel Lee backs himself no matter what double so he leaves. He believes he can hit them all. Game on. That's a lovely position to be in. But sometimes you can come unstuck. But he didn't on this occasion. 121. You've got to admire the creativity. One hundred. We've got the camaraderie in the back room with this bunch of players. We've got varying nationalities and everybody's getting on like a house on fire out the back. And uh, Daniel, Daniel is, uh, is one of those characters in that room. A nice enough guy. I was telling me yesterday, that I asked him why he had a beard. And he said sometimes he's used as a beard model. Okay, please explain more. Please explain more. Well, I don't know whether he's telling the truth 60. or whether he's trying to get me to mention something to make me look silly. And if he's getting me to mention something to make me look silly, I think he's just achieved it. 40. I feel like I might have a new career brewing. <laughs> yeah. When? In about eight years' time. It takes you ages to grow a beard. 100. But talking about beards, well, he can't grow one for love nor money. And he definitely couldn't make a model either. <laughs> 43. He couldn't be a model on Do the I radio. 120. So that's 120 for Tricol. Up to the top. 80. <laughs> and he's missed it by a fraction. Fifty-nine. Tebow, you're acquired. So, Tebow back at tops. Game shot on the fifth leg. Tebow Trico. Tricol leads three-two. He's a leg away. Seventeen data to put himself on the cast, to put himself on the hill, and to put him so back in the race to Group B qualification first. tomorrow Game on Friday on. night. Lee has the darts to stay in the match. It's all with throw here. Talking about. Stunt doubles. I mean, the only stunt... There's two stunt doubles Owen Binks could be. You could be the stunt double for Millhouse, and it could be the stunt double for Sideshow Bob with those shoes. 140. Oh, I can see the Millhouse. Yeah, I can see that one. He does look a bit cartoony, doesn't he? 95. Everything's coming up Millhouse. We really shouldn't just. Does a great job, our referee Owen Binks. One hundred. One of the very best out there, and uh, he does like a jovial bit of fun as well. So when he watches this back, he'll know it's Henry that said it, not me. Sixty.
One hundred. Yeah, one of our excellent team of uh, officials. Alongside the likes of Charlie Quarterfeen, Justin Bradshaw, Danny McNamara, Paul Hinks. 99. Will he be calling in a 161 for Thibaut Dracol to win the game? He may well be because he goes down for treble 17, but he can't find it to leave the ball. 97. Bit of shoulder in that one, wasn't there from Dracol? He thought it was going as well. Lee can't convert the 152, and so Tricol to move on to 12 points and to put three players 64. on that mark in the race of Group B. It's all about the 16 corridor. Another one of them leaves the requisite double for the match. 48. But it can't be converted. Daniel, you're required. And so 12. Lee comes back for double six to win leg six to send us all the way again, and it would be fitting. Knowing the pattern of play today, then we go all the way. Game we are going the all the way. We have played Lee. eight matches today. Six of them have gone the distance. Seven each final leg is Tebow to throw first. Of the Game last on. five have gone to leg seven. All the best, lads. All the best. One hundred. Yeah, only one of the games today has gone with the darts, and that was game number one of the day. Michael van der Horst versus Patrick Mart. Every other game since then 60. has gone against throw. So you're telling me that Daniel Lee wins this leg? What I'm telling you is every other game today, other than the first one, has gone against throw. 135. So he could have saved all his toil and trouble and just said the away player could win. One well, up to now, you could say that, but if I was one of those players, I would be objecting to that. Jacole looking to buck that trend. 95. So, Jacole is going... To 139. six from here, from 171 to get the job done. Fabulous visit there from Daniel Lee. Big 139, but Chacole is trying to cancel that out with trebles no, of his own. Double treble visit is needed again here from Lee. 42. And unfortunately, that Timo hasn't requires happened, 74. But... Left himself the 160. Should he get a chance to come back? Jacole is going to get one dart of that tops to win 54. the match. Nearly two times with the first one, Henry. Maybe a little bit of lateral drift. Lee, 160. is not going to go. And so Jacole comes back for 10s to see 60. the job through, to he get the two points and to create a real intriguing race for that third place. And that place in Group B, fives. Foul for Chacol, and he Tebow joins the club goal. of players to move on to 12 points. Daniel Lee defeated, and we're going to have one heck of a race to see who is going to get that final spot in Group B. Thibaut Chacol, the 4 free victor against Daniel Lee there. Another game which goes all the way and to a last leg decider. And so who's going to win 4 free when Michelle van der Horst takes on Lisa Ashton after this short break?
Welcome back. Game nine of today's 15 features darts as leading lady Lisa Ashton, who has won and lost 4-3 today, almost every match going the distance. She takes on Michelle van der Horst, and in terms of growing into a week, he is the one who's done that the best, really. After losing four of his first six games, he's won four of his last six, including two today against the top two as well. And he may yet sneak into third place and will occupy that spot with a win here for three of the players in this group. It's a case of to be or not to be. And let's find out which one will answer that question positively in the company of Henry Deacon and Scott Mitchell. Yeah, thanks, Murph. Yeah, perfectly put. Lisa's been getting her value for money today. A couple of four threes. OK, first leg is Michelle to throw horse. first. Let's change Game on. the colour of his lumberjack-type shirt. He feels most comfortable playing in. And it's changed his fortunes One a little today, hundred. beating both top of the group players. He might be playing in the lumberjack, but he's been lumbering up over the last couple of days. And Nine maybe, five. just maybe as the week goes on, he's going to be the one that comes out the pack. We see this quite often, don't we? Players that just quietly work their way for the week. And then when it comes to Saturday night, they strike. Reese Robinson, a couple of weeks ago, really good example of that. A win here for Van der Horst would move him onto 14 60. points. It would move him into pole position for Group B on Thursday and Friday, respectively. And you have to say the way he's starting. One hundred and eighty. As Owen Binks lets out the 180 call once again for Michelle van der Horst, the optimum maximum hitter in this group. 100. I'm sure you require 81. He finds himself on 81 after nine. He'll find himself wanting tops off with his 12 dart. Games finding top to his 12 dart. Michelle what a van start for Michel van der Horst. Well, I mentioned at the top of the show where his 180 hitting and things so and his scoring to throw first. has been Game. very good. It's been the outer ring that's been letting him down today. I think you could get more on today. The outer ring has been actually hurting people. And that's why he's been winning games against the very top of the group. 100. Sixty. Ninety six. Ashton loses this game, it mean that no matter what happens, she'll be bottom of the table. She can win her remaining sixty fixtures. She can move on to twelve points. Whoa! Another max of Ander Horst. It was a bit of a precarious max. One forty would have left one six five, but who are we to judge? Maximum 30. Michelle. Shall we record 125? 119. Well, he's left himself double free after 12 this time. Just can't stay away from that double talk, can he, Michelle Van der Horst? 57. Shall we require six? Double free. Games on the For second. For a 2 0 lead and a 13. The average at the minute is 120.24. And yes, it is that segment of the week once again when we say so it gives the Michelle record to throw is Jason Askew's 118. And a 12 and a 13. They're not late so won. far for Michelle van der Horst. The ADC Europe qualifier. Really showing his stuff here. And this is where we've got to give credit to the likes of John Lockman, who's doing great stuff with the ADC out in the European region by no, giving players so. like Van der Horst the opportunity to play on this stage here at the Super Series. And look, like any qualifier for any competition, it's a sink or swim environment for some. It may work out perfectly 50. like it is a Van der Horst. Of course, for one or two, there's going to be a couple of struggles. But by and large, what we've seen from the European qualifiers, especially over the course of the last couple of weeks, is some scintillating 50. stuff. We've unearthed some new talents, and we're going to continue to do that as the ADC European system evolves. 
And the collaboration with the MBD, uh, NDB is absolutely massive, I think. And, um, you know, they're going to find even more players and, and use the NDB's system alongside the ADC system. The ADC has this product here that can get you to here. And the MB, NDB has seen that. And the collaboration between the two is going to make them a mighty, mighty force in ADC Europe for sure. One hundred and thirteen. Lisa himself double seven this time. Ashton then ninety five to get a break back. Went the twenty five route. Can't blame her at all. Well, it should have been no double score. eleven. She went for the double twelve. She's she miscounted. And she can't believe it. He's finally missed a double van der horse. It's gonna be double two. No but score. now he's busted. This should require 95. Have another go, Lisa. Have another go. Make sure you get double 11 this time if you go that way. 78 left, yeah. <laughs> 78 this time. Had she hit the 54, it would have been 24. Oh, you've got to love this game. 14. If you don't laugh sometimes, you're going to cry. 12. It should require 58. And then Michelle decided to go 10 double two. This has been a crazy leg. But is Lisa going to win it? Game shot. The yes, it's the leg. answer. Lisa Rashford. And in the important dynamic, as far as the game is concerned, it's a break for the Lancashire Rose to bring it back to 2 1. Fourth leg is Lisa to throw first. So no damage Anyone? done with the miscount there. But you're still not thinking that once you've done it. You really do not. You don't. You don't let it go. 140. I'm sure, that, I'm sure that that little sort of chuckle will be back here in the back room with all the rest Whoa, when they bring it up with her shortly. Don't think it's affected either player, though. And when you're a player, the quality of Lisa Ashton, four-time world champion, you win those titles by putting things to the back of your mind. Back-to-back -back 140s in this leg, and... Vander Horst, hey, who came off to a rip-roaring start in this game. Well, that could prove to be academic because Ashton is flying. The Lancashire Rose has sprung into life. Three 140s on the trot for Lisa. 32. Lisa required 81. Vander Horst, 180, takes him at 19 for the group level. Patrick March. It's all about Lisa Game here. On the fourth uh, leg. Twelve dark Lisa leg. Ashton showing exactly what she has. Look, it's Michelle and exactly what the women's Game. game has and why they can compete with the men at the very top level. Talking about top. One hundred. That was almost another top visit from Van der Horst to one forty to kick things off. Average ticking a ton. 140. This is brewing up beautifully. Like a pint of Guinness at St. James's Gate. 60. There's probably one or two people on a works lunch break 100. who are probably just uh, enlightened there. 57. Seventy-six. One hundred and forty. Can visit there from Van der Horst. Sixty-five. Michelle, you record one hundred and four. Sensible last start there from Lisa Ashton. Heading the ball route. So Van der Horst is going to stay there. 64. 48. Lisa Went for the 24 20. there, I believe, to leave the top. So he has been, had a liking for tops. Ashton now can't go. 60. I'm sure you require 56. And so Van der Horst, 56 for 3 2. Tops. Game shot on the Found. fifth leg. 
Michelle 17 data, a leg away now is Michelle van der Horst, who's on the hill. Sivlik is Lisa to throw first. Game well, we thought van der Horst had bolted after winning the first two legs so impressively. And then Ashton came back to some tune, but he finds himself a leg away now. Forty-four. Yeah, the angle of the dart entry for Michelle van der Horst, with it, with it being slightly tilted across. If he's unfortunate, as you can see, it's not dead straight in the board. If he catches the wrong side of that dart, one hundred, it tends to fly off into the five. There's Ashton's. Like you saw a slight 99. reflection there. She uses a heavier weight flight. She uses a heavier weight dart by the looks of things, but it can 57. get deflected. Much easier with those heavier weight flights. That one was a deflection 100. in her favour, and the second one was a deflection out of favour. That is what you call top tier analysis. You know darts. 100. Sometimes I do. 61. Six from here to take us to leg seven again. 57. Lisa has the advantage here. 57. Finding van der Horst doesn't Lisa touch 104. into the treble segment, and he hasn't. So it's Lisa again, 104. Space to the right. Not quite on this occasion. 64. She'll 47. go down the channel. Shall we record 143? Slightly underpitched. Van der Horst is not going to trouble her on this occasion. 44. They should require 57. Well, Van der Horst has left himself on a 99 on a summer's day. 47. And he might get the Shall opportunity to put a flake in it. Tops, tops. For the cherry on top of the icing on the cake. Game for Michelle van der Horst. Michelle van der Horst. 99 on tops, tops. And Michelle van der Horst gets the better of Lisa Ashton by four legs to two. It means he is going to be in control now of that race for a Group B place on Thursday and Friday, respectively. We're going to take a short break. When we return, we are going to see Tommy Morris against Thibaut Tricol.
On we go here at the Motor Super Series, and we are back to the business end of Group A. And Tommy Morris is looking to take care of business here. If he wins this match, he will seal top spot in the group and will be the first player through to finals night on Saturday. That is largely because of that massive leg difference advantage he has, which, if he wins this game, could not be caught by Patrick Ma. And all the omens are good for Maurice as well. He's won both ties against Thibaut Treacle and emphatically as well. The Frenchman has only taken one leg off Maurice, though he did miss eight darts at double in yesterday's 4-1 defeat. But the past is in the past and Treacle himself is still playing for a podium place and a place in Group B. And we've seen today that nothing has come easily to anyone. Or maybe that's not the case because I can reliably inform you that Tommy Morris has actually just hit a nine darter in practice on that stage before this match. So more good omens for him, perhaps. Commentary for this one is provided by Henry and Scott. Thank you very much, Murph. Well, we know what happens from here, don't we? I'm not going to say anything. I'm just saying that Murph has stole our line there. We know what happens. Nine data in practice. Okay, you just hope that it's not first. peaking too soon. Game on. Indeed. Particularly when you're only needing... Well, it's gone. The nine dart has gone. Ninety-seven. We could have another. Well, we're probably going to have another six more legs. I won't worry too much, Scott. Maybe Tebow will do it. Maybe in total response. But to the serious 100. business, though, it's quite simple for Tommy Morris. He's accrued so much by way of legs difference that if he wins, he's in. It's quite a simple scenario as far as he's concerned. It's the scenario that any player at the beginning of a week want to involve themselves in. To know that. They know that any 55. kind of victory will do them enough because basically Tommy Morris has a 15-leg swing on Patrick Mark with two rounds of fixtures to go. Now, the maximum that can be swung in any direction is 16 legs. 140. Forty-four. Throw that last one away a bit for me there to Tommy. 60. I like the way he's starting to use the board. He's picking things up from other players, which is good. 92. Do you mean 146? 46. I like there about two other eight. He made a decision before he actually put his foot to the hockey. He was deciding which way to go for the 146. And he made the decision. It's 22, then double 11, first leg. 73. And he hasn't quite finished 46. it off. Well, that would have been for a double nine dart leg. As Jacol misses the big number there. He finds his route to 14. double 16 in the end, but he can't convert the double. And 11. so Morris returns from 11 to take the opening rubber with the darts. It's going to be two in his hand, a double four, and now down to twos. Nine. But it's above. And so Chacol returns to 32. Is this an early sting in the tail? One left. No score. Not found, and Morris is in the madhouse. You required two. You can hear him down the pub shouting, one up. One in. Game show the first leg. Well, listen, young Tommy man. Morris. Well, listened. I know that Tommy, Tommy had a, a, a re, we heard last week on, on Friday, so uh, Mace and Game On. Uh, we're, having, we're having a chat about the um, wristbands on Tommy's wrist. And Tommy, a couple of years ago, uh, was, was playing about on his friend's motocross bike and, and broke his wrist. And he thought his darting dreams were over because it was quite a bad break. And it took a while to heal. And he said that, you know, when he came back to trying to play, it was, you know, his, his uh, wrist was aching and his arm was hurting. 93. Um, but he says, as time's gone on, he think it may have been part of the reason what's helped improve as well in this game. 85. So I've, I've advised him probably to jump on a motocross bike and have a play about. It's not a good idea anymore at this stage in his darting life. 28. 
freak injuries in sport. I think the maddest one is Rory McIlroy when he played football and broke his foot and he couldn't play at the Open Championship. I think it was the year he was a very heavy favourite to win it. And maybe you can get in touch on social media at MSS Darts. The freakiest sporting injury you've ever heard. 66, Tommy. Bit of a different topic of conversation. Maybe you've had a freak one. Could this be a big finish for Morris? 127. Do you remember 114? 94 left. Going to find the triple 18 as Morris is going to return for double 14 for a 13 Tommy and a 2 0 lead. Remember, Tracol missed four darts to win the opening leg. Game and Morris has picked leg. up the pieces ever Tommy since. Morris. He knows he's halfway there. The Release of the pent-up emotions told you that. So it's Tommy to throw first. Game on. Yeah, those that know Tommy will know. 25. He likes to let a bit of that out. In the big moments. 140. And up to date on his dart in life. Winning group A. 60. Would be a very big moment for him in his dart in progress. 100. A foundation on which to build. 100. That was like a school report. Oh, mine just said, must try harder. 59. Mine was, I don't stop talking in class. Can you imagine? One. So this is the perfect job then. Well, I still got to occasionally shut up here. Ninety-four. Sixty. Timmy require one hundred and eight. And one hundred eight for Chacol to bring it back to two-one. And down on the nineteens, we'll stay there. I mean, look at the treble 18 here to leave himself double 16. 40. Tommy, record 156. 100. He'll be required 68. Two at double four. To get the break back. Twos. 64. And so Morris now, 56. Tommy, 56. For 3-0 lead. Two at tops. Bit high, wide, and handsome, and quick that one. Game show on the third leg. More composed. Tommy Morris. Throw with the last dart, and this is a side of his game that he's well, brought in again. I heard throw first. Mason Nico talk game about on. that on Friday when he made his debut, about how he's such a rapid thrower, yet when it comes to the double, he takes a bit of a step back. Ala Rob Cross. No, and, and I know that it's because he feels that there are darts that he throws away by throwing quickly at the double. And, and we no, saw it there. That, that first one went right up over the double five, really, and, and would have been no use to him whatsoever, even if it was in the right region. So it's something that he's brought into his 26. game. It's something he's developing, something he's learning. Sometimes he does hit, sometimes he does miss. And I tried to explain to you on the way in the car this morning that that's just the game, mate. That's just how it is. And I, I think what he's done is is progressing his game with, with that part of it. And like I say, he's now close on another big moment this week for him. Dorset getting promoted on Sunday. And Tommy B, group A winner on Wednesday. It is the position that every player at the beginning of the week wants to be in, the position to qualify for Saturday night. And he is in that position now. He could do it with some flair, some style. He can't do it for the 1 3 2. He could do it 4 0. And 42. on a day that's been do dominated by 4 3 scorelines, he could actually win two of his four matches by four legs to nil. He beat Daniel Lee by that scoreline in his first match. Unless Dracol has something in the works that just sneaks into the 19. Tops a free one. Game Tops a Jacob for that Hail Team Mary effort. It was indeed right in the top corner. If that was a penalty, wow, you'd have Finally been over the moon Tommy with that. To throw first. Game on. 
No one was stopping that. Can anyone stop 140. Morris? 140. As you can see, when he gets a bit frustrated, the afterburners come on, and he gets them gone very hey, quickly indeed. They're like a hot potato in his hand. 140. Back-to-back -back 140s in a leg that, if he wins, qualifies him for Saturday night. Think of it from Tricol's point of view here. One moment, he's just shooting 116 and thinking he's back in the game. Six times later, he's trailing by nearly 200. This is how quick the game can change when you're playing these rat-tat-tat -tat players. He's left 82 on after nine. He could qualify with an 11 here. And Tommy Morris, who Nine, came in to replace Gordon Mavers, who was unable to travel, has got time. He goes 41. to set up and leave tops after 12. Is this Morris's moment? 60. Tops Tommy for Tommy 40. for finals night. Darts in his hand. Double 10 now. Oh, that's a well-thrown dart. Going for the top side, Going and he makes it. Shot on the match. He knows he's Tommy through. Morris. I'm sure that reaction shows that he knows he's through. We're looking at our Group A winner. There we go. 4-1 to Tommy Morris. 86 average, not too shabby. He won't be worried about that. The 4 out of 11 on the doubles. He doesn't have to worry about that anymore today. He's through as our Group A winner. We head into a short break and we come back with Lisa Ashton and Patrick Mart. So, confirmation then, Tommy Morris is the Group A winner. And what a disappointment that sentence will be for Patrick Marr, whose form table has been turned upside down, really, from winning all five games yesterday to losing the three he has played so far today. He's not going to bridge the gap. The leg difference too strong for Tommy Morris. He will have to settle for Group B. Lisa Ashton will be in Group C. And in meetings against each other this week, well, the pair have both beaten each other this week. Mark firing in four 180s against Ashton, but there is only one stat really that stands out there in that head's head, isn't there? Look at that difference in checkout percentages. Patrick, just four out of 23 successful darts at double across those two games. Right, let's get back to our double acts in the comms box. Scott Mitchell is alongside Henry Deacon. 
Yes, you've got Anton Deck, you've got Torville and Dean. You've got Deacon and Mitchell for this. Absolutely, you have indeed. What are we expecting for Patrick Mark now? Because it's going to be a different scenario from him. He knows he can't qualify now. Is it a case of, look, just try and win your last couple of matches, try and play yourself into some form going into tomorrow night? Yeah, definitely. And, and I think that he needs to... Okay, first leg against uh, Lisa to three really first. forget what's going on, on now and, and, and go and win another game because that will then get him out of this whole Group B scenario as well. If he loses his next two games, he could actually get sucked in to to this Group B qualifying situation. I know his legs difference are okay now, but if he loses those couple of games, he's sucked right back in. 140. Excellent start from Ashton. In terms of 60. a day so far, she's been around 81, 82. So 81.6 in her first game against Thibaut Tricol. An 82 60. and a half against Daniel Lee and an 81.39 against Michelle van der Horst. We kind of know what we're going to get from her now as a sort of rough guide for the day, as a par for the course at least anyway. One six one after nine. It's been an exceptional start here for the Lancashire Rose. Sixty five. It has, and then those of you that sort of think about averages in old money, you know, that's twenty seven pluses, you know, twenty seven plus averages. Which is not too shabby. You have those of you that have played in a county weekend last weekend. Most would have been chuffed with that. Eighty seven. But you record one hundred and forty seven. Queuing it up. He doesn't find the green. 131. But he finds the setup. And so two fours for Ashton. On the first one nil Ashton. Ashton. And although the pair can't meet on Thursday and Friday, who knows what endemic mark this game could mean come Saturday night. Second against Patrick when they to meet three first. Potentially, this could be the £5,000 game on Saturday evening. And you should always... Try and leave a winning record against one another. One hundred. Yeah, indeed it is. And I think Lisa's starting to come into a bit of form as well to go into the Group 100. C stages. She'll want to leave on a good day and, and hit 80 averages for fun now. Talking of fun, she nearly hit a 180 for fun there. Um, that will set her up. See her in good stead in Group C. 100. What's it like being in the scenario Patrick Mart's in? Because the objective that you came here to achieve is no longer 39. possible, but you've got to go on and fulfil your fixtures. Yeah, you have, and, and it's only natural to find 97. an element of disappointment in what's going on, isn't there, really? Uh, that would That would be just natural for you to feel, so... Because it's happened at the game immediately before he plays either. It's not like there's a gap between a game to compose himself. But hopefully, he won't let it get to him 56. too much. Lisa, you require 127. It's time for 127. And game. And game. 88. Patrick, you require eight. No game. Not to be this time. Game's on the second leg. Patrick Patrick time on as fashion as he's done most of the week. He gets back for that second chance. He generally takes it. One out of three on the, the doubles. That was his percentage first. checkout ratio yesterday. What you're effectively saying oh, to your opponent as Ashton kicks off leg three of a max is you give me a clear visit to the board, you're not coming back. 60. Four. Five. 120. We're still awaiting that magical moment. Yeah, we can even hear the production team in our ears getting excited on that one. He won. One hundred and four. This is scoring on a Frankenstein level. It's frighteningly good. 140. 
Leads you requirement 56. Ashton leads 56 after nine. For 12. 16. Not that it's going to matter. She is going to come back. You can see what she tried to do there. She tried to use the dart that was already in the board and went high on it to try and slide it down the barrel. And 40. Just missed the flight and went above it, but comes back now. 20. Patrick, you require 145. So not to be for Martin, the 145. So Ashton's going to come back for the double 10 to Least you require establish 20. a two one lead. Game shot on the Two one it is. 16 data for Lisa Ashton. She's halfway towards the, vi at the victory post here against Patrick Mart. Fourth leg, it's Patrick to throw first. Lisa currently, as we stand, running a 91.50 average. 58. Patrick Mart's 92. Enjoyable game this so far. 96. Yeah, it has been indeed. And Mark's really 95. not being able to rest on any laurels about being part of the top of the group. He uh being put to the sword here 100. by Ashton. He seems to have just taken the gloves off and come out fighting. I'll tell you what, Scott, it's been a little while since you've had a last leg decider. 120. Shall we have one here? It's been a couple of matches. Yeah, why not? We're all having fun. Why not? 43. 58. Art leaves the fish. Biggest fish in the Tungsten Sea. It could change the Tungsten Tide. 170. Another. The bullseye. 128. But there will not be a fishy in the darty dishy. But have a look at this with a pot of Ashton. But you require 42. Pressure on the 42. Pressure on the double 16. 10. Not to be. And so Ashton Easy returns to 78, 78 for a 3-1 lead. The break of throw, which will put a one leg away. One dart at tops, it should be. Precariously close to the treble. 58. Yeah, she just 32. aims low, so she gives a bit of a dart over the top. Aims on the fourth leg. Patrick Mark. Safe as you like, but Patrick Mark again has his second opportunity and again... Hits if the double Lisa first to dart. First, game on. We're back all level at 2-2. Two, two. It's a best of three race. 140. 45. Well, Lisa's ton 40 plus hitting has been exemplary. She's had five in this game. 100. Nearly had to cross that out and say six. Sixty. One hundred. So Ashton down to a finish after nine again, which is not too shabby indeed. Sixty. They should require one hundred and sixty-one. She's maintained her level on that ninety-one average for the match. Fifty-two. Back three, three, six. One hundred and forty. At least you require one hundred and nine. This needs to tidy this up. Double eighteen. Ninety-one. Not to be, but she is going to come back for the double nine. But it's going to be under copious amounts of pressure. One hundred and twenty-one. Least you require. Could be a mid-match move moment for Mart if this double nine doesn't go. Game but it does for fair. Ashton, Lisa who takes Ashton. a three-two lead and is on the hill against the Dutchman, who once again is staring down the barrel. Sigflick is Patrick to throw first. Fifty-eight. One 
Wonderful. This really is super, super stuff here from Lisa Ashton. It's easy for us to sit here and say, you know, but she, she, she's Fair not had the, the best of weeks up to now and really started to produce today. It's, it's great to see. 100. Where would the group have been if she was able to have produced this on the first day or two, you know? 60. Justifying her place in being here. It's just great to see her just going up there and just letting rip and let the dartboard have it. 140. And more to the point, this says notice to Group C tomorrow and Friday. 60. Yeah, and I've been in Group C, and I, I then watched that last day to see who was coming in with you. And, um, yeah, you, you do tend to watch and see who's doing what. 137. Oh, once again, what a big, big shot from Lisa. She has 24 to win this match. 120. Lisa requires To do with a 13 data. Magnificent Don't from the Lancashire match. Rose is Lisa, Lisa Ashton. Ashton. Deposes of Patrick Marr by four legs to two. Doing so over 93 average. And that was despite 10 darts missed a double in the end. Her power scoring was absolutely exemplary. You can see that with the six ton 40 plus column there. So Ashton, a 4-2 victor. And she's put in a performance that's going to put down a marker for the Group C field on Thursday and Friday, respectively. After the break, it is the big game in terms of of Group B darts, Daniel Lee, Michelle van der Horst, follows these commercial messages. You are watching the Modus Super Series, and the next match is a big one in the battle for Group B. In fact, it could be the last one in that battle, as if Michel van der Horst wins it, then he will finish third and send his opponent, Daniel Lee, into Group C for the rest of the week, along with Thibaut Tricol and Lisa Ashton. In terms of their own personal battle, van der Horst won Monday's meeting, but Lee took Tuesday's tussle. The pair sharing 6180s across those two ties. Van der Horst averaging four points higher, but Lee has been, as you can see, the more efficient finisher. And everything could be finished in terms of who is playing where for the rest of the week at the end of this match. But if Lee does win, he keeps himself in contention for a top three finish. And he also keeps Thibaut Tricol in play as well. So to talk you through every dart in this one, it's back to Henry and Scott. Thank you very much, but we... Should put a little bit of a caveat, though, on the double statistics today because Daniel Lee, in his three games so far, has missed 27 darts at double. That has been his trouble so far today, and that is why he finds himself on the back foot as he takes on Michel van der Horst. 
in this oh so okay, crucial so game Daniel for Thursday night first. darts. Game on. Yeah, not forgetting that uh, Van der Horst is unbeaten today as well. He's three from three. He's played the top two in the group also. So One hundred should be high for Michelle. Well, he's getting better as the days go along. Whoa, Perfect start. 180. He's been testing the vocal cords of Owen Binks today. Not as much as Coldplay will tonight. 45. 180. There from Michael van der Horst. It is 20th of the week. 60. Top of the three in 180s this week. 60. Showing his class and showing his pedigree. Today he's showing that he's really come into the week. Whichever group Nine, one. he goes into for the next two days will be a danger man. Scoring power will help 100. him considerably. Can he find the fish of a finish? Sixty. Daniel, you're one hundred and fifty-six. Well, if Adam Horse couldn't find a rip draw, can Daniel Lee know is the answer? On this particular occasion, and so Van der Horst will come back for 110 to take the opening leg against the darts. 26. Shall we require 110? Can't be done now. 38. Daniel, you require 130. Treble. Got to have the ball's eyes, so Van der Horst. Should come back now for Darts at double to win this opening leg Shall against the Darts. 72. Leaving his favourite tops there. He's been prolific yeah, he on, on it. The first leg. All day Michelle today. Van der Horst. And Michel van der Horst takes leg one. Second leg is Michel to throw first. Game on. And so an opening leg break for Michel van der Horst. Three more. And he is in Group 60. B tomorrow and Friday evening from 10 o'clock here on Sporty Stuff TV and the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. Just a reminder about tomorrow afternoon session. Now, it's a 1 o'clock start exclusively live 60. on the Super Series YouTube channel. Then we're going to be joining our friends at Sporty Stuff TV from 3 o'clock for Game 7 onwards at the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth. 25. A reminder... If you are tuning in to us, courtesy of the YouTube channel of the Moda Super Series, then if you click hey, the subscribe you button, you'll get notified before every session gets underway. We'll have highlights packages of every session. We'll have exclusive bonus content, interviews, features behind the scenes. Hey, you want. So it is your ultimate place for the ultimate darts content. 120. That was a bit of a flyer. It was rapid, wasn't it? I mean, it was, he tried to throw that last one while the second one, I think, was still in the air. 77. 65. Okay, was with the last, but the damage was really done before. 140. And the horse putting himself in the shop window for the leg after. 98. Lee had sort of Shall we record 118? Been run away with it early doors. 58. Daniel, you require 76. So 76 for Daniel, and it's double eight. He thought that was in. He was halfway there to collect it. Game shot. That on one the is Daniel. Leg. Daniel Go Lee. collect. Go and collect your winnings, which in this case is the leg. So look, it's Daniel to throw first. Game on. So Lee to kick off leg three.
83. I've got to say, I'm a big fan of the Van der Horst look. 82. Huge fan. Like I said uh, earlier in the week, it's, it's something that he's always done. I do remember him when he had his Invisible Man 40 on the back of his dark shirt. What, you saw the Invisible Man? I couldn't see him. I just saw the shirt. There was nothing in the shirt. It was just there in midair. And I and I 50, remember him changing and said he just felt far more comfortable in a normal shirt. And it's the same brand of shirt. It's just like having a dark shirt. It's not that he changes brand of Whoa, shirt. He just changes the color. Look good, feel good, play good. 13. I said to him yesterday, where's the orange ones gone? You used to play in the same, you know, an orange one all the time. And he had a, 60. a fleet of orange ones at the dry cleaners, I suppose. But now he, he, he changes color and changes around. And, and I like it. Like you say, I like it. Everybody 50, has their individuality with what they wear in, in darts. And um, yeah, why not that? Fair play to him. It's all about individuality in this individual sport. Daniel Lee has his own individual style. He's got this way of, well, utilising every single segment of the board. 57. Daniel, you require 80. And he goes straight for tops, tops. 50. Tops will be his last start. 60. But it drags just below. 50. Yeah, van der Horst to exert a little pressure. 140. Daniel, you're exactly what 20. he's done. Game is on the third leg. Daniel to no Lee. avail on this occasion. So Daniel Lee takes a 2-1 lead over Michel van der Horst. Four against Michel to throw first. Game on. Goes with the darts. One hundred and forty. Victory here for Daniel Lee by four legs of three. Both players would be on fourteen points and zero. Hey, he won. No, scrap that. My apologies. No, it'd be Daniel Lee who'd go above zero, and then Van der Horst minus two. Sixty. Sixty. Nine. The equation simple for Vanderhorst. Win and he's in. You can effectively One try and make the outlook of this a knockout match in that respect. Forty-two. It's the way you'd have to look at this game. But that's a little bit of a miscount there from Van 60. der Horst and Duchess who usually so good at their counting. Fifty-eight. Lee didn't capitalise on that. Will he capitalise on this? 100, Michelle, you record 104. Well, it can't be done now. The five leaves 99. And so Lee returns for the ton. 44, Daniel, you require To take 100. a 3-1 lead. Tops. Game to the find the break, to Daniel go 3-1 up. And Daniel Lee is on the cusp of a crucial victory against Michelle van der Horst. 3-1 up. With the darts, still a 4-1 win, which have put the pair on 14 points game. going into the last game. All importantly, Daniel Lee would have a better leg count. 180! A bit of inspiration for Daniel Lee. 60. Fifty-nine. 
84. So you visit in front in this leg. 58. Forty-five. Sixty. Well, this would be Prime Van der Horst to find a max hit. Prime Van der Horst. But can Daniel Lee win... With a bit of panache, not on this occasion. And so. 140. Van der Horst leads 1 3 2. Daniel Lee leads double 2. 64. Daniel, you're required 4. So Lee to close it out then with a double 2. Double 1. Motivates himself, two. gives him the go on. Show your requirements. He knows how vital this is. It's Group B chances. Game shot on the fifth leg. And Michelle van der Horst. Michael van der Horst. Michelle van der Horst, sorry, has absolutely. Sixth leg is Michelle to throw first. Blown this game, game out of the water once more. Because he's not only broke the throw, he now has throw. 100 and a hold of that. We'll see it go 3-3. Daniel Lee having had three missed chances at a double to put him level on points hey, in the want... table. Has Daniel Lee been stung by the dream snatcher? 85. Does this leg have a sting in the tail for Daniel Lee? 59. 60. This game could be described as the Battle of the Beards. We're not going down there again. 100. But which beard will be revered with the two points at the end of this one? Well, Michelle van der Horst 83. had a bit of a kick over the last couple of legs. But if Daniel Lee, if Daniel Lee loses this Battle of the Beards, well, he'll be trimmed from the Group B occasion. 31. Shall we record? No, Nicely 33. done, he will be indeed. It's van der Horst on 1 3 3. 57. 45. Show you requires 76. It's a disjointed figure we're seeing from Lee now since he lost that after 36. three match darts. He's going to have to try and compose himself. Should he not hit anything tidy 65. here? Well, he's given himself a chance. 40. It's all Game now down to whether play. Michael van der Horst van der misses Horst. that double top, and he did not. Michelle did not. So it's 3-3. Three, three. and final leg is Daniel to throw first. But in this situation, he has to tell himself that he has the darts, this one. What a great shot that was. 58. To be or not to be, that is the question here in Portsmouth, where we lay our scene. 30 it's not quite a Romeo and Juliet story, but it could be one of tragedy for whoever loses this game. And it's going to be tight-armed, isn't it? It's going to be a tight arm in this one. You can see that already. 34. And the horse made the mistakes first. And Daniel Lee followed it. Michelle van der Horst. 87. Goes across, and that is a big trouble. 20 last dart in the context of this last 41. leg. Lee is still trying to locate a treble. 84. 
that Van der Horst is located him, but he'd be disappointed with that because he hit one first start and never really troubled it with the next two. He's just been able to get to the different checkpoints of in the leg, visit by visit by 100. visit. He is working his way down. He may start down. Eighty two. Again, that's a last start. Punching the guts for Lee. Nine. Oh, he returns the favour. It's not left him a shot. But yeah, treble twenty last start would have left him one seventy. All about leaving it handy. Ninety five. He does some kind of job there, leaving seventy eight. And so Van der Horst, 139 to see his place on Thursday and Friday night. So Daniel Lee to claim the point and to put it down to the final game of the session. Game Double 12 is bound for Daniel Lee Daniel to Lee. win 4 free against Michel Van der Horst. And now it's him who is back in pole position for that race for Group B on Thursday, Friday night. A 4 free victor, a pair of 77 averages in the end, but... Michel van der Horst was actually 100% on the doubles. It was the scoring phase that for once let him down. Daniel Lee, a 4-3 victor there. So the final round of fixtures is upon us. And we kick off with Lisa Ashton against Tommy Morris after this short break. Welcome back to the action here at the Modus Super Series, where Tommy Morris is about to start his victory lap. The pool player has played his darts right and sealed a spot at finals night. And his final fling before returning on Saturday is a meeting with a legend that is Lisa Ashton. She will return in Group C tomorrow, and she put in a devilish display in defeating Patrick Mark in a previous game. Lisa looking for a third win of the day, Tommy looking for his fourth, and both players, knowing their contrasting fates, well, these kind of matches are always difficult to call, but Scott Mitchell and Henry Deacon will do just that. Thank you very much, Chris. And so, to the final round of Group A we go. Getting off with Ashton, up against Morris. I suppose you're going to have to get used to the quick-paced nature okay, of commentary, first, Scott, because we've been doing a little bit of speedway this evening. Yeah, yeah. My hometown club, Paul Pirates. We do a little little stint, Pirates TV, where we bring the meeting 43. live via a live stream to those who can't attend through work or 100. one thing or another. It's proven very popular, something that we started last year, and 
Yeah, keeps my commentary hand in as well. So uh, when I'm not here, 60. I'm there weekly doing bits for them. Full David Croft. Go, go, go. No, that's Murray Walker, five. wasn't it? Yeah. No, it definitely, you know, I get a little bit excited. It's my hometown club. And, and when some of the riders pull off some crazy moves because these guys that ride these two-wheel machines 60. that go 18, 90 mile an hour into the corner, no brakes, pull off some moves, I do get a little excited. So uh, I go all oh, Henry Deacon over the darts. That's what I do. I hope you weren't using that as a vehicle for people to tune in. Yes, of course 63. I was. 63. Well, this is one of these unique scenarios, isn't it, at the Super Series? Because both players know their fate in it. Look, for Tommy, you want to leave a lasting impression. You're going to be here on Saturday. So make sure that your last impression is a good one and leave people saying, well, how good has this guy played this week? Whereas for Lisa, he'll be doing the exact same Tommy, you're in Group C. Yeah, indeed. And like I said, he's been away with the county 60. over the weekend and come straight into here. We'll be looking forward for a couple of days off of the darts. I'm looking forward to the rest. As we said earlier, Lisa. Tommy require 96. We'll be looking to stamp her mark. 56. To just let people know Lisa whichever requires the group 16. C players that she's here and means business. Double four and now double two. 12. Well, the scoring phase was good. 40. The doubles have come a-begging. And so Morris comes up for tops. On the first finding day. tops. Tommy leading 1-0 for breaker throw. These two are quite good friends as well. They sit on the same table at so Challenge Tour. Tommy to throw first. On occasions. 180. And Tommy, I know, calls her mum. <laughs> her dad's mum when uh, they're in... The back room here. 60. That's how close they are. 100. You can see with the grimace on his face. He was thinking about the nine there. And who can blame him? He's won the group for now. Why not have a little bit of fun? Why not showcase your ability to the best of their strengths? Nine. It's a strange scenario that you can relax with your last game, isn't it? Sixty. Tommy require It's more what the body does more than what the mind does. Because your mind's still thinking I want to win, but the adrenaline doesn't yes. maybe naturally 46. flow or course as much as it would because it's not fight or flight. One hundred and twenty eight. Tommy require yeah, forty two. Nice pick up there from Lisa on the treble eighteens. It's double 16 for Morris. 10. Lisa, you require 132. Lisa Ashton famously hit this finish in a World Masters final against Eileen de Graff. Back in 2015 at the Hull City Hall. That's actually the year Glenn Dummett won his first World Masters title. Game on the second. Tommy leg. Morris 2 0. Tommy Morris. Leader in this game, though. Although that passage of play was great from Ashton, the game didn't actually end up too well. She well, uh, was defeated by Eileen de Graaf. That was her first big major one. I won the Dutch Open, didn't she, this year, Eileen? 100. Yeah, another one of the top ladies who... seldomly you remember. 137. Being one of the top ladies. She's been there and thereabout for the last five, six years. One hundred and eighty. Fifty-five. Sixty. So Ashton leaving a finish after nine. Morris goes downstairs to come up to try and give himself the best nine, opportunity nine. to get himself a finish because, as you can see, another trouble there would have left him the big fish. So Ashton, one, six, one, six on here to get her first leg on the board. 97. Easy four left after 12. Good leg this from the Lancashire Rose. 100. Lisa requires 64. 
So it's Ashton now with 64, double eight. Game is on the third. Nice leg. and clean. Lisa Ashton. 14 dart leg for Ashton. For a hold of throw. That takes well, some beating. to throw first. Well, you're making your opponent have a full visit leg. It's as simple as 140. that. 140. Indeed. And I think we're going to see some more big scoring here again. Now it's another 180. We well, said we're going to see some big scoring. Ironically, Lisa only hit 41. two 180s in the first two days, and now she's hit five today. Eighty five. One hundred. She sat on seven one eighties with Tebow Trickle, funny enough. One hundred and forty. One hundred and forty. Leaves you require ninety six. Both these players in full flow now. Double eighteen. Game shot in the fourth and leg. Another Lisa Ashton. Leg goes Ashton's way, but this time in eleven darts. This is a real flurry from the Lancashire Rose. Game. Well, she averaged 93 in her previous game against Patrick March. She's doing exactly the same here. 100. Maybe she's just beginning to peak at the right time. She knew the group A wasn't the battle going into today, but she's priming herself 97. ready for the jewels to come on Thursday and Friday in Group C. And the 11 dart leg being a baker throw. That's the time to do the 11. 100. One hundred. Sixty. Sixty. Ashton back in the lipstick. 140. Two occasions this time. Forty-one. At least you require one hundred and one. It's nine now for thirty-two for Ashton for three legs 69. in a row. This is that for a fifteen. Tommy back on two oh three. 136. That's a great 32. response, but he's going to have to rely on Ashton missing this 32. Game shot on the but fifth she leg. She duly doesn't. Lisa That's Ashton. three legs in a row now. 14, 11, 16. Six leg is Tommy to throw first. Lisa looking to finish with a flourish. The Lancashire Rose Nine, looking to five. blossom into Group C on Thursday and Friday, respectively. Reminder that our coverage of that will begin from 1 o'clock on the Super Series YouTube channel before we then transfer 60. over to Sporty Stuff TV from free. And don't forget, Saturday night's final is at 7.30 start here on the no, Super Series seven. YouTube channel before joining Sporty Stuff TV at 10. And you could be a part of it here on Saturday night. Scan that QR code. It takes you to a website no, called seven. dartshop.tv and you may be able to be a part of the audience here every single Saturday evening. 135. 30. 60. Morris looking favourite for this leg on throw. Ashton's not. Been hitting the scoring heights of the last three legs. 40. Tommy, you're 114. 94. It looks like we're going all the way to a decider once again. It's been the theme of the day. 140. Tommy, required 20. Double 10 to send us there again.
Game shown the sixth flag. And we will Tommy go Morris. all the way to a deciding leg. A fantastic dart for Tommy Morris to send us the distance somewhere. Seven we are going for a seventh to time back. today. Game on. It's time number seven that we go to next seven. But for who would it be heaven and hell? 100. One hundred and forty. Aston opens up with a ton, and Morris replies with a one forty. Aston's coming right back at him with a one forty. Sensational stuff here. At the end of 140. match thirteen, another one forty from Morris. Over half of the games today have gone all the way. 140. It's a good, it's been hard to prize apart. It's 161. They had 140 in a row there for Morris. 90. Tommy requires a big bullseye to finish that combination off for Lisa. So it's 12 for bullseye for Morris. 56. Lisa Once again, he hits 71. a 25 going for bullseye. So this is 12, 17, double 10 for this match from Lisa Ashton. 51. Tommy requires to 25. Say, that is very tight. So Morris now then, double eight. For a 15 dart leg. Nine. And he missed Lisa it. Lisa requires 20. And so Ashton gets her reprieve. She gets another stab at double ten. And she didn't Game need a second invitation. And Lisa, Lisa Ashton, Ashton rounds off her Group A campaign with a 4 3 victory over good friend Tommy Morris, who we will next see here at the Super Series on Saturday night as our Group A finalist. These are the stats then from Game 13 of our day. Once again, we went to the full seven legs. Lisa Ashton winning with an 89 average, 4 out of 12 when it came to the finishing, and the highlight checkout being. A 96. So, a couple more matches to go here, and it's all about the race of Group B. Michel van der Horst is in action after this short break. He takes on Thibaut Tricol. Join us after this. Welcome back. Well, the man of the moment, Tommy Morris, has qualified for finals tonight. Congratulations. Cheers, buddy. Thank um, you. Just, well, let's, let's first of all take a look at the table and 
see what it looks like, your name there in position one. Now, I'm sure that you thought it would be a closer run fight at the start yeah, of the day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to come here, being on my doorstep as well, and it's all a great group, and we all get on good, so it's, it's, it's been tough. But to qualify like that is a massive thing for me. There was a moment earlier in the day you let a three-leg lead slip against yeah. Michelle van der Horst. How did you regroup after that? I just, just kept plugging. You've got to take game by game. And I think if you think about the table and think about where you're doing, I think if you just go up there and play each game as you can, and then it, it just clicks, you know? I look at that as a county game for Dorset. So then going back each game at a time, it doesn't build up the pressure. I mean, everybody deals with it different, but I just take each game as you come. And I think that's helped me this week. I suppose one of the questions that the viewers are going to have is sort of, where have you been hiding? Because we saw you play really well here when you had that day on Friday. Yeah, and really it's, good stuff this week. It, it's one of them. I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Being a local guy as well and playing in the uh, SDS has helped me a lot, bring up like, the, uh, like the, the game for this. So it's, it's just built up. Yeah, that's Southampton Darts series yeah, yeah. where a lot of the players from here have played and played well before. Um, look, finals night on Saturday, completely different kettle of fish, different yeah. format and audience yeah, yeah. here as well. How are you feeling about that? Well, I'm used to playing on stage in front of people and I, I know the guys that are, that are in the group. So it's, it, we go to challenge chores and stuff, etc. So I know about them, which is good. Just got to bring my game like I did here and probably do a little bit better. So there'll be uh, a, f a few uh, coming over from pool? Possibly, yeah. I mean, get, get, on, the, uh, get on the seats and get here, yeah. <laughs> There you go. Get your tickets. You can see yeah. Tommy Morris in action. It'll be fast and furious. Uh, good luck. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, he's topped the group. It's now about who will finish in Group B. Still three players in that fight. Thibaut Tricol is one of them, but he would need two matches to go 4 nil his way. Michel van der Horst can take it to the last match if he wins this game. Daniel Lee, the player currently occupying that position, and Henry Deacon and Scott Mitchell will talk you through it. Thank you very much, Chris. And well, it was great there to. Here from, well, your mucker, Tommy Morris. Yeah, yeah. Usually when he sits in the car, he can't get, he keep his gob shut. He looked a bit shy up there then. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a talkaholic. But, um, yeah, uh, pleased for him. It's, uh, it's a big moment for him. And hopefully he can come back on Saturday and play some more of what he's been doing this week. But before then, we've got a few games to sort out in the group. OK, first leg, it's Michelle to throw first. Yes. Game on. Two matches left to play today, and Thibaut Tricol needs both of them to go 4-0 in the direction that he wants it to be in 100. to qualify for Group B. He's got a chance, but it is as slim as a piece of string that has been cut up by a pair of scissors. 100. So you'd say he's on slim pickings, then? That's probably a better way of putting it. 60. I knew where you were going, mate. I knew where you were going with it. But yeah, I agree. Van der Horst. Are we hoping for a 4 0 win 60. here to give himself any chance of going through and hoping his countryman, Patrick Mark, helps him in the last one. It's Daniel Lee. That's all by the by. It's all now depends on what happens 60. here. You would feel that on the passage of play, 80. it should be a shootout between Van der Horst and Lee because they've been the consistent players. Over the course of today, Van der Horst has really been the man, but the blemish was to 50. Daniel Lee in that game, which was a bit cagey, a bit scrappy. Could well be the one that dictates the destiny of Group B, potentially. 100. Yeah, we could be looking back at the end of the day and reflecting on that one. We felt it had that at the time. 47. But with a Shall few games to go, sometimes that can be eradicated, but... 44. And the horse here. I don't want to fall the wrong route for me. There we go. 100. Thibaut's sure back in. 60. Exerting a little pressure on that 60 now. Here's that double top that he's been so good on today. 40. Thibaut requires Not 76. on this occasion. And so 76 for the opening leg break for Jacol. A little bit flashy. 
A little bit of va va boom from the French touch. Ooh la la. Je m'appelle Scott. I don't know any other. I don't know any other. French. Until next time, Scott. Bonjour. Yeah. Je t'aime. To you, Henry. Well, we're going to have a look at the 48. players' action from overhead and to see how the darts enter the board. Well, perfectly in the case of Dracol there. 85. Thirty-four. Yeah, Van der Horst has lost his way a little. He's in that first leg has unsettled him a little bit. Sixty. One hundred and forty. And one forty puts him back in the leg. But for how long? 125. Stick with the last. 60. 95. I do like that camera angle. And we just got a slight technical gremlin here in proceedings. So players will just pause play temporarily, which gives us an opportunity here in the commentary box, Scott, to talk about what we have seen so far. And Tommy Morris, who seems to be taking every single part of his Super Series experience in his stride. Yeah, absolutely. I think sometimes it's nice to come here as a debutant because you're not really expecting anything. You know, if you've come and you've been here before and experienced... A little bit of heartache. That's not a good thing to experience for your, for your second time round. So he's taken everything in his stride and, and it's all gone his way and, and, and fair play to him. As a Patrick Mart, how much is it about now trying to regroup ahead of tomorrow's Group B campaign? Well, I suppose his week will actually all revolve around that game with Morris, really. He, he's, that's the only bit that he's really done wrong. Um, so to reflect too much on anything else but that, would be harsh on himself, and I just think he's set up really well to go into that Group B. Nisa Ashton's put in some good performances today, but because we've been focusing on battles elsewhere, has what she's done on Wednesday gone a little bit under the radar? Yeah, very much so. We've been watching the battle at the top and, and, and how that's been working, and, and she's produced some form today and, and, and looking like the, the least that we know and love. So she's going to go into that Group C. If she can continue that form tomorrow then she's going to be problematic to those guys. I know the lineups aren't fully confirmed for Group B and C yet, but we can talk about the players that are coming in on Thursday and Friday, respectively, in those groups. We'll talk about the evening session first, the Group B, which concerns Lee Shu and Steve West and Dan Reed. Players who have got pedigree in this competition for different reasons. Yeah, very much so. And, and I think that they come in with confidence, with airs of confidence. You know, they've done well here before. Um, a difficult group to go into. And, of course, they've got to look at each other as well. So, just very quickly, Group C. Jack Main coming back. Now, he missed a dart to book his place at Champions Week last time out. Do you think they'll give an extra bit of inspiration going into this week? I think so. With the younger players, it's all about ambition and, and where they want to be. And every time that they fail at something, they go back, they take a step back and then try even harder. So, yeah, I, think, I don't think it would be a bad thing for him to, to come back and I think he'll be all fired up, ready to go. Well, we apologise for the slight pause in play here at the Super Series. We can head up to the balcony now and have a chat with Chris Murphy. But first off, Chris, maybe just your assessment on what we've seen so far today at the Live Lounge. The interesting day, isn't it? I think with the results of Patrick Mark that Tommy Morris has had the best Wednesday result since Craig David, really fantastic for him to be able to just take advantage of that Mark capitulation, going from winning five of his matches yesterday to losing four today. I'm now hearing that the, the problem has been resolved, so I'm going to throw back to the boys in the box and we will get this uh, penultimate match back underway. 
Thank you very much, Chris. And many apologies for the break in play here at the live lounge. Michel van der Horst and Thibaut Tricol ready to get back underway. We're in the midst of the second leg. Thibaut Tricol leading by a leg to nil. 92, 92 he wants. Now, remember, he is looking for a 4-0 victory in this game against the Dutchman to harbour any hopes of Group B darts on Thursday and Friday, respectively, as he looks Going now for double 16 to take that Thibaut second leg Trinkle. and to move him halfway towards that particular victory pose. For Michel van der Horst, the victory would put him on to 16 so points and it would put the first. ball in the court of Game. Daniel Lee. He takes on Patrick Mart in our final game of the session. Apologies again for that slight interruption of play, 60. but we are back underway and it is Thibaut Tricol who gets that 2-0 lead. And you have to say, because that was his first darts back at the board, Scott, that showed a lot of composure and a lot of maturity from him. Yeah, it did. And, and like you say, not easy to have a delay. Um, it's one of those things. It does happen with technology. And uh, we have to get on with it and get on with it. He did with, with great style there. I think he had the advantage maybe that Van der Horst was thrown before him. 180. There's another 180 from Trickle. It's almost NFL 100. style where a coach can just put a, a pit stop in, in the air and a timeout. And the fact that he could recompose and win again. And credit to both players, it should be said as well. 93. But let's concentrate on the darts from here on in. Yes, indeed. 45. One hundred and forty. Ricoh is throwing a lot more freedom, it seems, in this game. One hundred and forty. Do we require fifty-two? So it's thirty-two to go three zip for Tricol. Game shot on the third leg. Tebow Tricol is where he heads, and maybe. Just maybe it could be happening for Jacob. Well, it's Tebow to throw first. So if he wins this leg and Patrick Mark beats Daniel Lee by 38. Four legs to nil. It could happen. 100. Could be the French Revolution at the Super Series. Uh -huh. Vive la darts. 100. One hundred and eighty. Max of Van der Horst. Yet another Max for Van der Horst. 41. 22. In Group A, it's astonishing. The 22 180s, he finds himself 59. currently sat in fourth position in the group and just highlights a little how he struggled on the outer ring. 81. 41. Sixty. Shall we record one hundred and twenty-one? So six from here for Van der Horst. Double eighteen. And that would have finished Dr. Cole's hopes. He's going to come back for more opportunities. Dr. Cole needs to find something big now. He needs to hit and he needs to hope. Nine. He's done half Drawing of the hitting. 18. And now he's got to be hoping for the missing. It's only going to be one at double four. Game he finds the, the double player. four. Michelle and that's Vanderbilt. the end of Thibaut Tricol's chances of qualifying for Group B here at the Super Series. And it's effectively now a shootout between Michel van der Horst and Daniel Lee. To throw first. Game on. One hundred and forty. And in a week that's been dominated by 3-0 comebacks, a day been... 
dominated by 4-3 score lines. It would not surprise you in the slightest if Van der Horst could find a way of pulling off another miraculous comeback. Eighty-three. After having a run earlier of six games on the trot going against the darts, we now have a run of five games on the trot going with the 100. darts. One hundred. Trends and patterns. One hundred. One hundred and forty. Pass the score. 100. And Van der Horst could be close to pretty much half in the deficit. Unless Tricol can find a superb match winner. 100. I'm sure he requires Lays 78. it up if this doesn't go. 38. It's tops. 38. It's missed. And Chacol for a 4 40. 1 victory. Game and it is a 4 match. 1 victory Thibaut for Tebow Tricol. And so he gets the better of Michel van der Horst by four legs to one, doing so with an 86 and a half average. Michel van der Horst, a 4 1 defeat for him. And well, that means because he's on minus five on 14 and Daniel Lee is on. 0 and 14, even a 4 0 defeat for Daniel Lee now would only put him on to minus 4, and so that confirms his place in Group B on Thursday and Friday night, respectively. So that game against Patrick Mart is coming up after this short break. Right, just one match left to play in Group A this week then, but all of the business is already resolved. Tommy Morris has won the group. Patrick Mart, well, he's playing in the last match, looking to avoid losing all five games, having won all five yesterday to lead overnight. He finishes second in the table, or he's second in the table. Daniel Lee actually could leapfrog him with the right scoreline, but he will be in Group B along with Patrick, Van der Horst, Tricol and Ashton going to Group C. So to talk you through the last match, it's back to Henry and Scott. Thank you very much, Chris. So, the final game of Group A. And this is basically a little bit of a jostler ahead of Thursday and Friday night just to maybe lay one or two little cards on the table between Daniel Lee and Patrick Mark. You can give yourself that opportunity to say, well, I okay, beat you yesterday Patrick if you go into the first day game and on. Friday action. So, the term dead rubber is absolutely irrelevant in this one. 
140. It sure is, but both will want to leave with wins heading into that Group B because this is effectively a head-to-head -head where they'll play again tomorrow. 70. So, yeah, both players in Group B, they're joining Lee Shu and Steve West and Reed. 174. In Group C will be Ryan Harrington, Shane McGurk, Jack Main, Michelle van der Horst, Thibaut Tricol, and Lisa Ashton. That is just horrid. 139. You drew that group in a round robin tournament in your local club. It would be called the Group of Death. 79. Oh, you require There's no 48. such thing as a non group of death at the Super Series. Tops or Lee Games for an 11. The first leg. Daniel Lee. 1 0. In the, well, the blink of an eye, it took a minute and a second to get that leg done. Second leg is Daniel to throw first. Game on. You have to worry about Patrick Mart here because since losing to Tommy Morris. 100. Well, it seems to have fallen apart up there on the dartboard. 44. 134. Need to get himself a good night's rest. Be ready for his 99. campaign in Group B tomorrow. One would suggest that Daniel Lee doesn't want any rest. He probably want to play on for the rest of the day the way he started. 59. 46. I think you're right. I believe he will. That problem dark. 96. One underneath where it just kicks across. One hundred, Daniel, you require one hundred and twelve. The only number he's missed so far has been the big number. Like I say, he's back at tops. One hundred and thirty-four, Daniel, you require forty. And rapid. Game on the second leg. Daniel Lee. Two minutes and forty-nine seconds. Now, if he keeps that kind of record going, we could be breaking so records. To first. Game on. He's adding 111.33. He's 2 0 up in the blink of an eye. And Patrick Martin himself is averaging 93.7, but it's had nothing by way of a look in, in this match. 100. No, it sums his day up from about the middle of the group, doesn't it? Daniel Lee looks as bright as a button here. Hey, T1. Should he win this 4 0, I believe? He may be able to take second spot in the group. 59. Ninety-seven. So one one six for Mart after twelve this time. Been an impressive last game of the day. This seventy-eight. Patrick, one hundred and sixteen. Ninety-six left. Moves across. Can't find the treble for double eighteen. Sixty. I know you're one hundred and sixty-four. Daniel Lee find a rip for aura. Been playing like a man with an aura. But he can't find the 164. 138, Patrick, require 56. Miss on the big number. 24. It's a little bit sloppy there. Tired darts at the end of a tiring day. Double 13 Game for Lee for 3 0. Daniel Lee. Averaging 104.86. He's 
Three out of three when it comes to the doubles, and he may be finishing well, off his Bupe campaign Game with on. a little bit of a statement. Oh, I like to see him playing with pace. It's exciting to watch, and he plays better with a little bit of pace. 140. Doesn't he? I, I think we agree with that. I know there may be a little bit of a dead rubber scenario here. But 85. Not in... Daniel Lee's eyes, he, he has a chance to go second here, and I wonder if he'd known that before he started. 100. You go into the group as a slightly hey, different four. place, don't you? And he is racing away with this game. He's putting in the premier performance of the week thus far. 34. And he leads 1 2 7 to win the game. Averaging 108.29. He's three out of three when it's come to the doubles. And he's got six here to round off an immaculate performance. Fifty-three. He leads seventy-four after twelve to get the job done. In our final match of the session of the live lounge. And maybe we've saved the best performance till last. Thirty-four. Postcard answers, please. Thirty. Daniel, you're required forty. Tops for Lee for a four nil win. Double ten. Game shot Magnificent from Daniel, Daniel Lee. Lee. That was absolutely brilliant. And he has laid down a marker for tomorrow night in Group B. The average was 100.2, but it was much more than that in reality. Four out of five on the doubles. And a little bit of eccentricness as well. It's everything we've come to love of Daniel Lee over the first three days of the live lounge in Porto. We're going to be seeing a little bit more of him on Thursday and Friday evening because he's the man who now finishes second in Group A. So he gets the better of Patrick Barr by four legs to nil. That concludes our coverage for the afternoon. One final thing to do, and that is to head up to the balcony and get the thoughts, opinions, and analysis of the 2015 World Champion, Scott Mitchell, who is alongside Chris Murphy. Yeah, thank you very much, Henry. Daniel Lee, well, he certainly turned his swag on for that last match, didn't he? I like him playing at a quicker pace. So, uh, yeah, fair play to him. That, that's the best average of the day so far. Yeah, and I believe he actually tried to go 25, 25, 24 for that last finish. That's kind of the unorthodox thing that we've come to expect from him this week. It is, and he's a bit of a flair player, I think. When he's right on his metal, I think he would be very entertaining to watch. Well, let's see how it affects the final league table. As you can see, Daniel has actually leapfrogged Patrick Martin. Now, at the start of the day, it was almost unimaginable that anybody outside Morris and Mart would finish in the top two. Yeah, absolutely. You know, today we've had a bit of everything. All the way through, there's been something on it, and it's, it's kept it interesting to watch. Disastrous day for Patrick, but you have to give full credit for Tommy Morris, particularly when he let that three-leg lead slip earlier on and then regrouped to get the job done. Yeah, Patrick's day sort of collapsed after the game with Morris, and, and it was sort of dictated that Morris was going to be top. I think he's got to find something overnight, get some rest, play later tomorrow, try and find something to do to take his mind off it tomorrow and then start afresh tomorrow evening. Well, you mentioned tomorrow we do have a double dose of darts and you can see who is in which group now. Um, a couple of the players that are going into group C actually finished just two points adrift of the top three in this group. So it does suggest that particularly Thibaut Tricol and Michelle van der Horst will be competitive, but Lisa Ashton as well. But that incoming trio, very tough, Jack Main, Ryan Harrington and Shane McGurk. But they do come in cold. You know, I think there's a slight advantage of having been up there the day before. As long as you can find, you know, if you finish your last match and you've won it, you go into tomorrow with a different attitude. And there in Group B, Dan Reed coming in with Lee Shewan and Steve West, who everybody knows well. Uh, Patrick Mart, well, how, what, what does he need to do? Daniel Lee's obviously signed off on a high. Mart won five yesterday, lost five today. What does he need to do to, to get ready for Group B? Well, like I say, I think he just needs to rest up, go out tonight, have something to eat, forget about what's happened today, and go back with a fresh start. Because when he had a fresh start on Monday, he was superb. Sounds like a good plan for all of us, actually. Well, don't forget, you can join us again tomorrow for the action. We get underway at 1pm in the 
Group C exclusively on the YouTube channel, and then from 3 p.m. on Sporty Stuff TV, again then on both platforms from 10 p.m. for the start of Group B. But as far as Group A was concerned, well, that belonged to Tommy Morrison. We will see him here at finals night on Saturday. We hope to see you tomorrow.